Kasihan banget. <laughs> And that's what uh, session okay. zero is for. <laughs> uh, session zero was last week. Oh, session, session one. Sure. Yeah, oh, session yeah. half. Oh, yeah, it says live on Facebook. All right, we're back. Okay. Here we go. So, uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye on the stability of this because if it's a, a constant feature of Facebook, then we'll go back to um, broadcasting on YouTube, YouTube. and redirection there. So, um, yeah, so you're, the gentlemen are in the saloon bar, the favor. Um, a waitress comes over. She's dressed formally in black with a white collar and a white pinafer. Um, and she has, um, hold up, yes. let's make sure we're still. I don't know. If, are we still live? I assume we are until somebody yeah. tells me we're not. The Zoom um, meeting, it actually says up in the top left, live on okay, Facebook. Okay, so it says live on Facebook on Zoom as well, which is quite useful. Yeah, it's working on my phone. Okay, cool. So um, a waitress comes up. Um, she has um, quite sharp features um, and kind of pointy ears. And you notice that she has a... Oh, there we go. I'll, I'll stop there because we're welcoming our lucky last. Yay! Yay! Who's not Bean? <laughs> bean, for, bean for now. Sean Bean. <laughs> it's okay, he'll die shortly. Yeah. Oh my god. Not that... a rogue this time, he's fine. All right. Sean Bean still dies. Okay. Sean Bean always dies. <laughs> if you can name one movie he hasn't, I'll give you a dollar. Um, oh, damn it. I was watching one the other day and he didn't die, and I can't remember what it was. It's like a family movie or something. Um, I'm sure he still died in spirit. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. D damn you, damn you, Stuart, and prick back your ears, because I'm going to name a movie in which Sean Bean does not die. Ready? National mm -hmm. Treasure with Nicolas Cage. He gets sent to jail, but he doesn't die. He dies in prison off screen. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you, sir, you, sir, owe me a dollar of your money. Because he does not die on screen. So, thank you. He also doesn't die in Jupiter Ascending. Oh, of course, he's in that crappy old film as well. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to keep going because Bean's um, hopefully joining us relatively. Wait, she changed the name. Yeah, I'm here. here. Oh, I'm here. Hey. I just don't want the camera on right now. I'm still <laughs> setting things up. That's fine. Glad to, I'm glad I didn't say anything about it with your audio on and I couldn't see it. <laughs> I'm a consummate professional. Um, okay, I was basically you guys um, have gone to the favor. Um, you've all been invited by letter to go. Um, and the gentlemen are in the saloon bar. Um, the ladies amongst you um, are in the ladies bar, the ladies bar, which is part of the same building but segregated. Um, I was just describing a waitress had gone up to the gentleman folk. Um, she's Tallish, slim, angular features, pointy ears, and she has a rather elegant set of wings um, behind her, kind of folded down. Um, and she um, looks at you and uh, decides not to speak to Ikbo, uh, but addresses Carswell. And it says, um, oh, welcome gentlemen to Le Favour. I'm gonna make the assumption you haven't been here before. Is that correct? Um, no, for myself, no. Well, thank you. Okay, and, and Gregor says, no, I have not been here. That's my accent, by the way. Hey. So that's what I get. <laughs> um, and she'll take Igbo's silence as a, an, a, an acknowledgement. As, as uh, I wasn't, I was ignored by her, I'm ignoring her. <laughs> that's fine. She, she, is, she will literally lose zero sleep over that. Um, she says, very well, well uh, this is an absinthe lounge and uh, the drinks we offer this evening are absinthe. And I will bring over the uh, apparatus and I will show you how to uh, drink like gentlemen. And she walks away. Um, do, do you wish to have a discussion before she comes back? No, okay, that's cool. Um. Um, <laughs> we're a social bunch, that's men for you. Um, and she comes back and she has a waiter with her who appears to be Elven. Um, and they place in front of you, um, it's, it's quite a tall apparatus 
on um, copper legs. And it's like a, basically it's a cylindrical water tank uh, with lots of ice cubes in it. And at the bottom of the water tank on, there's um, six spigots that come out with small little taps. And she places um, three cups, uh, sorry, three glasses. Uh, and they look, I suppose, a bit like a, a bit like a flower in the fact that they got kind of a bulbous round part of the bottom and it flares up like a daffodil at the top. Um, she then produces a bottle of green liquid and fills up the round part of each glass and places atop the uh, glass a silver spoon with slots in it and a sugar cube. Once she's done that three times, she passes one to Iqbo, one to Gregor, and one to Carswell. And she says, uh, when you are ready to uh, drink the drink, what you do is you place the glass under the spigot, and she places an empty glass underneath one of the spigots, and you just uh, open the tap, and, and you can see once she opens the tap, uh, water drips through. It's not a steady stream, it just drips through quite consistently. And uh, she says, uh, once you have finished uh, with uh, as much water as you want, uh, you turn the tap off and you enjoy your drink. The sugar is to dissolve into the drink, otherwise it is very bitter. Uh, you have not uh, drunk absinthe before. I may recommend mainly uh, have it uh, with more water than not and uh, sip it. Do not drink it too fast. I will leave you and you can enjoy your evening. Thank you. And uh, the waiter and the waitress disappear. Uh, you all have your drinks in front of you. Um, <laughs> I will join, I will now just quickly go to the ladies' lounge. Uh, the ladies' lounge is beautiful. It's got lovely flocked wallpaper. Um, there's uh, thick pile rugs on the floor. Um, the, the building is lit internally with gas lamps, and it's quite bright. Um, and uh, there is, for the want of a better description, there's a, a lovely tea service in front of you. And um, a gentleman comes over. He's human, quite young, dark skinned. Uh, he says, uh, welcome ladies. Um, and, he, and he kind of, his eyes lingered just a fraction too comfortably on, long on the dwarf and then moves back. Um, and he said, uh, would you like me to serve you tea? Yes, please. Oh, my awesome figure. Very good. And he, uh, like by, the way, by the way, yeah. people, join, people <laughs> joining us for the first time, d and is not just about drinking tea. I will just point that out now. This is just part of, I am setting the scene. Um, or am I? Um, I'm just living out my fantasy of drinking tea <laughs> in a posh place. Can I uh, request an oolong tea, please? <laughs> uh, you can request it, but we do not have it. Huh? And, no. and he just pours you some fine um, Edisonian uh, leaf tea. Um, it's not from Edisonia, but, you know. Um, and he pours out a cup each, and he says, uh, the milk is here, or the cream, and there are sugar oh, yes. lumps in the bowl. Please, you, you may help yourselves, ladies. You are not as helpless as people may think you are. And with that, he, <laughs> he, he, he bows very slightly, and he leaves you to enjoy your cup of tea. Would the ladies like to discuss anything um, well, before I head back? Okay, so I pick up my teacup, take yeah. it like I'm shot and then <laughs> no. put it down and then go it's very weak like and i thought it would be green song is just slowly tipping like more and more cream into her tea <laughs> I, I, yeah. no, cream, no, no sugar i was just like straight <laughs> wow you, you took your tea straight yeah yeah hardcore great all right in so her mind She's come into a bar. She thinks this is alcoholic, but she's surprised at how gentle it is. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, I can see where you might. Yeah, okay. Uh, I shall, I shall rejoin. Um, I shall rejoin the men. Um, have you all started drinking? I know Gregor has. Have you started sipping at your drink in front of you? Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm hoping to see this uh, supposed green fairy. Okay. All right. No worries. Um, okay, so as you're sipping your drink, um, a human, probably in his mid to late 50s, um, walks up to the table. He's dressed rather smartly, if, so, if, if not somewhat formally. Um, he's wearing um, a, a chocolatey brown suit. He's got a waistcoat and a bow tie. And he wears a brown derby on his head or a bowler hat for those who wish. 
Um, he says, "Ah, oh, oh, you, you, you've arrived. I, I apologise for being a bit late. There was um, there was a bit of a, a, a flap doodle and kerfuffle on the street on my way here, and it kind of held me back a bit. I do apologise. Um, you, you won't know me, but uh, I am the um, author of the letters and the invitations you received. Um, and any sort of has a look. He says, I, I, I kind of thought there would be more of you. We were separated at the door." Yes, the the, la the ladies have gone to their area, and he and he puts his hand to his mouth. Oh, of course, I oh, I should have remembered. Wait here, wait here, and between between the saloon and the ladies' lounge, there's actually a door, um, and and he kind of opens the door, and uh, the, on the other side of the door, uh, there's an employee of Le Favre, who's presumably his only job is to make sure that ladies don't stray into the rough and dangerous world of a gentleman's saloon bar. Um, the gentleman in the brown suit whispers in the ear and uh, the gentleman steps aside and nods. And uh, the gentleman now presents himself at the ladies table. Oh, ladies, I, I, I do hope you're enjoying your drink. I'm the author of the invitations that you may have received in the mail. I do apologize for the mix up. Uh, there shouldn't have been a bit of you know, this uh, kind of moving you to a, a different room. If you'd like to go through, um, we'll collect the gentleman on the way and we'll head up the flight of stairs and go to room number four, if you don't mind. Is there like a, like sandwiches or anything that came with the tea service? Oh, well, um, no, th th there's, there isn't, um, but you can certainly um, feel free to ask the gentleman that's now in front of you who appears to have arranged this meeting. Oh, no, okay. I just take two cubes of sugar, pop it in my mouth as I like walk along. Yeah, the, the, the human in the brown suit nervously laughs as he sees you do this. <laughs> come on, come on, come this way. Um, and you walk back through the room. The gentleman on the, in the ladies' lounge shuts the door behind you. Except and... I'm going to ask for high tea since that's what I was expecting if I'm coming into this side of the room. Uh, it's, it's, no, it doesn't quite work like that, but you, you mustn't linger here too long. This is a gentleman's saloon bar and it's not for the faint of vapours like ladies. Um, and, I, and, and he presents at the men's table and says, I, I found your chums. Um, let's go upstairs. We have a room booked at room number four. If you'd like to follow me up the stairs. And there's this uh, wrought iron uh, spiral staircase that he starts to proceed up. I kind of cringe when I walk up the metal iron staircase. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah 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 okay cool do i see into the room can i tell that there's liquor on like the tables in the men's section oh yeah there's a there's a there's a, a very extravagant kind of bar behind where it's like five or six shelves just of beautifully colored crystal bottles and liquids okay. and you can smell it you're a dwarf you good. can smell lose a mile off. Good. good to know okay yeah um and you walk along a lovely carpeted uh, hallway on the first floor um or the second floor if you're American, and uh, you proceed down, the proceed, you go past, on your left-hand side, there's room number one, number two, number three, and at room number four is a beautiful mahogany door with gold leaf uh, number, which says number four, and he opens the um, nicely polished brass knob, and inside is a very extravagant kind of room, beautiful wood inlay, uh, nice carpet, very well kept and well maintained, and there's a nice large table. In the middle of the table, there's um, there's some food. There's like roast chicken and potatoes and some salad and sandwiches. It's it's a pretty nice buffet, to be honest. Um, and uh, the um, the human in the brown suit gestures you to go through. He'll follow you in. I'm going to swish in because that's what ladies <clears throat> in walking dresses do. So I'm going to swish into the room and loudly declare, don't mind if I do, and start picking delicately at the uh, servings on the table. Yes, please help help yourself. There were plates and there were the proper cutlery um, down there. It's just a light snack, so you don't need to, um, you know, set the table up formally. And ladies, relax. You don't have to serve anyone tonight. Um, you can you can serve yourselves and the men can probably manage. If not, I can I... get a serving. I can get a or, serving to come in if not. I'm already walking over. I'm piling a plate um, and finding a spot that I, looks comfortable to me. Yep. Well, there's, there's some nice padded chairs around this table. So that's. Mm -hmm. yeah. I will um, curl up with my legs under me on one of those padded chairs. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so um, you, the, the gentleman, before he shuts the door, just um, kind of. He, he's he's inside the room and he's looking at you, but his right hand goes behind him and he goes, 
Um, and, and next to no time, there's a, a serving girl. Um, and he says, um, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to give your drinks order to this uh, serving girl. Um, you'll Three fairies, this. please. Sorry? Three fairies. I have three. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, that's fine. Give her one. <laughs> um, I, I would advise the gentleman. Um, did you finish your fairies from before? He's yes. using your term. Yes. Right. All right. Um, you're welcome to order whatever you like, but obviously, um, I would advise against uh, another fairy just in case it can be it can creep up on you, as they say. A M- mug of any kind of beer, please. Uh, well, yes, okay, but yes. Uh, we uh, well, I'm not sure they serve mugs, but we can get a nice glass of beer for you, I'm sure. Anything, anything. Very good, very good. Uh, niche and, brandy, uh, please. Sorry. Niche brandy, please. Uh, okay, well, we can do a balloon of brandy for you. That's fine. Uh, yes, uh, and maybe the delectable song of the river. Oh, just some cream, please. <laughs> uh, you, guys, you, you seem to have a thing with cream, lady. I was going to ask for milk, so you've kind of stuffed that over. <laughs> Oh, I'll have what she's having then. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I whispered. Yeah. I whispered to Gregor, women. <laughs> I know. What is this with milk and cream? It's the same thing. It's for peasants. <laughs> okay, I, I, I have beer too. I have beer. <laughs> um, and the, the, the serving girl is frantically writing all this down and looking increasingly confused. Um, so that's uh, one fairy, two beers, a brandy, and some high low in a jug. Uh, and and uh, for for timber, um, timber would probably still just be looking at the green drink, sniffing it, just still kind of unsure if he wants to, just kind of sticking out his tongue, just wanting to like just kind of wants to taste it, kind of doesn't want to drink it because he knows it's probably a bad idea. Okay, and and the gentleman. Hey. In- and the gentleman I, in the brown and brown suit says to Timber, "You can take your time. She'll be back. Don't worry." Okay. I I turn to Timber and I go, "If you don't like it, I'll have yours." <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're gonna get messy. <laughs> um, okay, that's cool. And the serving girl disappears. Uh, the gentleman closes the door and he takes a seat um, at the the chair nearest the door. And he says, well, uh, while you're eating and drinking, um, maybe it's good if we get down to business. I've obviously called you here for a reason. Um, Once my business is done, you can take as long as you like and order as many drinks and more food if you wish. Um, You don't have to worry about the bill. That's already taken care of. Um, But uh, I'll introduce myself. Uh, My name is Wilkins, or you may address me as Wilkins. And I've been asked to gather you here today on behalf of my master. Uh, He's looking for um a group of um i do so hate to use the word adventurers that's all rather down at heel some some independently motivated people that uh, would appreciate being paid in return for a service of uh, money uh, yeah. what yeah money i heard the word money oh yes yes well obviously you know and you know let's not forget that drinks and food also cost money as well as does renting this room and uh who is your master well, if you'd allow me to uh, get to the end of my little spiel, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Um, uh, my master is, um, you think you'd know this, really, uh, Professor Emmett Langstrom. Um, and he's very keen to employ your services. Now, I, I can't say too much for why he wants you or what he wants you to do, uh, because the main point of gathering you here tonight is to, for him to invite you to attend his residence, and that will be um, tomorrow evening, um, where he will set out the terms and conditions of what he wants to hire you for. He's heard many good things about your camaraderie and your togetherness, and maybe your your willingness to kind of overlook some of the more stuffy and inconvenient laws and rules of this city and this country, and maybe this world. So the point is, he would like to see you. Um, there is money involved, so don't worry, uh, Sir Knights, a lot. Um, money is um, not an issue for him, within reason, of course. Um, but yes, he wants me really to just to gather you. And uh, and as he's saying that, there's a there's a rap on the door, and um, it's actually one of the waiters um, comes in. 
Um, he has a tray of relative of, of, of alcoholic drinks and uh, breakfast cereal accompaniments. Um, and he hands one to each of you. Um, you suspect that he deliberately confuses Song's cream for Anais's um, milk. So he gives them to the wrong people. Um, and he also um, hands over um, a small piece of paper to Wilkins. Uh, Wilkins reads it. Uh, oh, okay. Well, as it turns out, I mean, feel free again, look, feel free to uh, enjoy your food and your drink. It's already paid for, as I think I may have mentioned. Um, but um, Professor Langstrom would actually be um, curious to know whether you could attend his residence this evening, unless you have other plans, of course. I heard the word money, so I'm good. <laughs> Yes, yes, I, I think I've 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 noted your your motivation, and it's and it's laudable, if not slightly derivative. Um, uh, through a full mouth of food, I'm like, yeah, okay. Excellent. Yes, yes good. Uh, I, I I I is there anybody here that's not willing to go tonight? I'm probably going to reply with that is a rather extreme situation to be inviting some of us have employers already and it's unconscionable that you would rouse a uh, guest to an event without proper preparation or time my goodness the lady has some moxie about her um <laughs> i i lady i is I'm well not, informed well I, I i'm not sure i'm quite used in my station to be spoken to in such a way but i i i hear what you're saying and one station is lower than mine would you like to readjust well, unless you're paying my wage, then I would assume that your station is no higher than mine. I could afford Even to pay your you wage, were. but moving on. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a what, sorry? <laughs> I'm a waiter? Is that what you said? Do I look Who like are you a waiter? She can afford to pay your wage, not you're a waiter. Oh, okay. Well, very well. <laughs> I'm assuming the waiter's gone by this stage. It's not the waiter talking to you, so... I just thought you were talking to walls then. That was a little strange. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, well, as you know, um, we live in a dynamic society, madam, and sometimes things change. And when things change, we sometimes have to make alternative arrangements. Um, I'm sure this is not a new concept to you, but uh, if it is, um, maybe we can make another date, another time for you where we can, can maybe explain it to you in simple terms. Because you're a lady. Okay. I'll come just as long as you know your place yes thank you madam um okay very well well look as i say um you will need to um uh, this will share the screen again okay so i shall oh the joys of technology <laughs> there we go now um let me see if i can zoom out by using the oh come on Loading, loading, loading. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the meantime, I shall, I shall, I shall go to Plan B, which is just a static photo of the city, and verbally describe what's happening. Uh, to a greater or lesser extent, yeah. Um, so um, he says, look. Please, as I say, feel free to finish. Um, the, the hour of the day that you visit is, is of no uh, mind to my employer. Uh, he works mostly through the night anyway. Um, if you head along to the end of uh, Da Vinci Avenue, it's 1400 Da Vinci Avenue. Um, if you make your way there, um, as soon as you're able to, as a group, um, you'll be most welcome in his home. Uh, do you have any questions? No. That's easy then. My job. Uh, Timber will just ask, "Can I get some more chicken?" <laughs> oh, absolutely, yes. Um, I, I, I tell you what. On my way out back to my employer, I'll make sure that some new chicken is brought up for you. Thank you. A fairy. Hmm. A what? And another fairy. Uh, you only uh, well, you've had one. I mean, they do recommend that one is usually enough. Timber is just going to slide his <laughs> over to her. <laughs> And I just like let it slide, like, and I just like slowly look more, more delighted. Timber sounds oh. happy. <laughs> I think I think Timber's talking to us. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so um, Timber slides your his fairy over to you. That's fine. Um, and Wilkins um, puts his hat on and, and doffs it for you, and he disappears. 
Um, and a few moments later, the um, the tall human waiter comes in and puts another couple of roast chickens on the table um, and is prepared to take any more drink orders as you wish. I'm good uh, with my cream. I'll swap my cream with a nice as milk. <laughs> yeah, we'll just casually <laughs> or the, just swap. <laughs> yeah. Or the milk, uh, cream with milk, yeah. So you're mixing your drinks. Is what I'm <laughs> okay. Uh, no, that's fine. Um... Uh, so you obviously, as a group, um, you're eating and you're drinking. This is the first time you've been together uh, in, in a few days, let's say. You, you do all know each other. Um, you've been in the city now for at least a couple of months. Um, for most of you, it's been longer. Um, feel free to kind of have a conversation or discuss what's about to happen before we move on. Or not. Well, I, well, I, I just... So I just want to know what what, what was in this um, invite letter we received? Uh, to meet at Le Fever at seven pm. It's on the corner of Edison and Voltaire. No further information. Signed, a friend. Uh, well, I suggest we discuss what time we shall meet up at Professor. What was his name? Lang <laughs> Langstrom. Legs from what residence. times are currently? Uh, let's say it's now getting on to about quarter to eight. And so, where are you there in how long? Whenever Just you wish thing. to get there. There is oh. no time restraints, but I think the ladies may have to go to bed soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, well, I see I have... food and alcohol yeah. before us. I say we enjoy what has been given to us as it is paid for. No, no need to rush. Then this chicken is quite good. And that too. Besides, it's rude of a gentleman to just summarily summon people at will. I say we make him wait. So what time would you suggest a nice? Well, I follow the, the, uh, the ruling of, of voice of reason. I say we demolish what is left to us. They've offered it. Will we use it? Let's eat. Gregor, Gregor adds, uh, you know, this is a, a good idea, but let us not leave the gentleman waiting. He's asked for us specifically. It is rude to then make him wait too long. Okay. And it's rude not to eat the food offered. I agree. And to drink. <laughs> so we eat, we drink, and then we make our way to Professor Lambert's house. Yes. Eventually. Thanks, Trump. Sorry. <laughs> just, just, yeah, eventually, but not too long, you know. It, uh, and, and, and like you said, Iqbo, you know, the ladies need their beauty sleep, so we, we must not give them up too late. Speak for yourself. Are we getting up early? Well, you surely must have jobs to do. Before you go to work, you clean house, you do cooking, you, uh, uh, you prepare clothes for a house. Mm -hmm. You have jobs to do. This, not everybody has that role in the society, my pet. Uh, you discuss it, but it still not seem real. <laughs> would you like? I was yeah. attempting to go. Would you like a scritch on the ear? <laughs> yes, I always love scritch on the ear. I'm going to scritch, reach up and scritch him. He smiles. He's a friend. We've done this before. <laughs> yeah. He smiles and he doesn't say anything further to inflame the situation. Um, so unless you uh, unless um, you have any objections, I will proceed uh, the adventure. Um, I feel another huge like piling plate. Bring it yeah. over to and put it between myself and Timber to um, to like just share food. Yep, Timber probably it's more that, of that. <laughs> and he's I trying really that. hard to be like delicate and polite because everything's all fancy, but he's just and very I'm, awkward with his paws. I, I'm not trying at all. I'm just like handballing it straight to. <laughs> and I suspect Wookie is one of those kind of people that have big pockets to put food in when they go places. <laughs> she hadn't thought of that. <laughs> no, no, no. She has now. <laughs> yeah. Someone mentioned it to her. She would think that's a fair idea. Yeah. Gregor says, like for Bushka, you can put it in cloak and hold it around front. And she has one hell of a cloak. Like it's huge. Yeah, plenty of food for space. Oh no, I don't know. No, no, plenty of space for food. Excellent. That's the and, and Gregor at some point would have pointed out that somebody had to read the letter to him because he does not read. Um, so I, 
I would very willingly read the letter and you see where at the bottom where it says your friend or something you mentioned mm. before yeah. i have drawn love hearts around the word friend oh cute nice <laughs> what did you use to write the love hearts with um i'm sure that i would have had like some kind of um like charcoal or something like that okay that I carry with me it's just a piece of straight charcoal in your pocket <laughs> and oh yeah no i've got like this <laughs> bag of of things for divination and i'm sure that i would have had like a piece of charcoal or something along those lines in there, there you it would have okay so the drinks have been drank and the food has been feeded and uh, for those who wish to stuff their pockets and cloaks full of food the, you have done so um it's now about nine o'clock at la favor um, the streets outside are still quite busy. The streets are gaslit in this part of town. So it's still quite, it's quite a commercial district. Um, the, the shops have shut. However, there are other taverns and eateries um, and other places. Um, however, um, you're aware it, that it's nine o'clock and there's a big clock um, just over at the National Institute of Science um, that says it's nine o'clock. And um, you need to be heading up uh, Da Vinci Avenue. Um, unfortunately, there's no trolley bus that goes that way, so um, it looks like Shanks Pony is the best way to get there. If I have to explain what Shanks' Pony is. Is there like a top carriage drawn by a horse? No, it's your legs. Oh. Uh, I oh. it was, I was, well, in that case, it, it's a drunken stumble to this uh, gentleman's house. Oh, you're drunk? Let's do a, you can do a constitution <gasps> saving roll then, That's please. Wrong. No! <laughs> oh, no, you've said it now, so you're going to oh, do it. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah. Rookie <laughs> um, well, I was rolled a fifteen. Okay, you're all right. You, you 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 feel you feel the buzz. You feel you feel a beer buzz. Um, with a little fairy sitting on top. And um, cool. I know. I know. Um, I'm going to come back to Rookie as well because you had more than one fairy. So. Yeah. Would I have successfully decanted some of like a, like a the fairy drinks that I had continuously ordered um, into like a flask. Sure, why not? <laughs> just casually pouring them into a pocket. <laughs> some yeah. for me, some for you. So, so how, many, how many did you actually drink at the time? How many do you think I would have gotten away with ordering? It was an open tab, so you tell me. Oh, wow, okay. Timber, at some point, would you have stopped me? No. Hey. No. Like Viking man, they drink. He would have just gone, okay. I don't like the smell of this drink. Hey, you can have it. Oh, look at her go. <laughs> like I was brought around, uh, brought up around a lot of drinking. So to me, I'm just like, why wouldn't I? Yeah, um, why wouldn't you? I agree with that. <laughs> so, so how long had I been there? Uh, really so you'd been it, about a couple of it, hours by the time you left. Oh yeah, let's say I would have probably had one every half an hour, um, yeah. and then would have tried to decanter another two into my um, my hip flask. All right, so you definitely drunk four then. Yep. Cool. So roll me a Constitution saving throw with disadvantage. Uh, okay. For those playing at home, disadvantage is rolling twice and picking the lowest. <laughs> Thank you, Ixbo. Excellent. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. Um, because I'm a dwarf and I uh, am into poison, would that include liquor? Um, it would probably be okay for liquor, but it, that's on the assumption that it's liquor I'm talking about. Oh. Oh, there you go. So okay. what's the numbers? Let, let's hear your numbers. I'm a numbers guy. Oh, my numbers would impress everybody. I've mm -hmm. got a three and a four on the roll. Um, and my constitution is 17. Did you say a crit? Uh, hey? You, you rolled a one? No, a three and a four. Three oh. and a four. No, right, it's so just, uh, either yeah. way, it was going to be bad. Yeah. So just be, I'm just about to send you a private message. Right in. <sighs> There's me thinking as a, a dwarf, I, like nothing would affect me. And a and that is clearly a dwarf thinking. Puppy! Sorry. Sorry, time out. Dogs are going crazy. That's right. I had that before. That will set mine off was a giant moth trying to break through the window. Like, 
This big. Alright. So that's uh that's a secret text I've sent to, mm. to Secretsville. I am delighted. I am truly delighted and giggling a little. Absolutely you are. And like right. waving my hands in the air. Yep. And and obviously you guys all see this. Is that you yeah. Uh, it's, it's been, I don't think you, as long as you've known Wookiee, she's probably not ever acted like this. It's, it's unusual. It's uncharacteristic. So. Oh, I wouldn't say go as far as that. I okay. am acting weird, All right. but on the, of the tone in which my life is led. Okay. No, no, that's cool. Um, so you're outside the Fave Air and what are you going to do, guys? <clears throat> I am going to poke Wookiee to see if she falls over. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep you giggling, but a bit louder. Yeah, she doesn't fall over, apparently. <laughs> how Greg, close do you think you could sling her over your shoulder? How how close are you to me? Hey, when you poke me. Um, right next to you, because how can you poke half someone a meter. 20 feet away? <laughs> <laughs> From do 20 you foot away. Major so because I, I would, in, like, my reaction would be to hug you. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Okay. I'm just, just looking hug. down at Mr. Dwarf hugging me. I'm like, not again. Like, no. wave a little bit and then let go and then continue walking. Okay, cool. Oh. So you're gonna you're gonna walk um, to Professor Langstrom's house. Yeah. Yes, but then you have to get some of the alcohol out of her system. <laughs> it, yeah, as I say, it may, uh, I mean, you can roll an investigation if you wish. Might as well. Let's do that. Yeah. It's a game of dice, after all. Right. Um, Ixbo doesn't care enough to roll. No. <laughs> That's a good one. I like it. I like it already. <laughs> Three. Yeah, a she's, a, she, she's a regular booze hound, as far as you're concerned. It's, it's <laughs> all booze. <laughs> but, yeah. but, like... I'm I'm strangely fascinated with like you know you think it's your hair or something and like you know I just like wave my hand above you. Yeah. But then how do you reach above me? You to like. No, like she's reaching little... up to you. Oh. Yeah. Hey. I was just, uh, for yeah. a second there, I thought you meant like you were reaching above me. I'm like that's a neat trick for a dwarf. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She like she's floating. Like, like fascinated, and you you think it like you know I'm enraptured by your hair or something along those lines. This glorious hair, I'm not going to lie. Well, not this, obviously. <laughs> okay, the so glorious hair of an ice. so whilst um, Wookie is flapping her hands and in then, front, of and then coat. just like I turn around and say, "So pretty." Ah, oh. um, <laughs> you, you walk up, um, Da Vinci. It, there's there's a very slight drizzle in the air. It's not particularly cold, but it's not warm either. The, the streets are cobbled. Um, there's um, there are lamp posts um, evenly dotted, so it's quite it's quite well lit. Um, there's a few people about. Um, it, it's a it's a fairly main part of the city, so there doesn't appear to be many ne'er do wells um, dwelling in that area. You see a couple of police officers. Um, they walk past you and they they kind of put their truncheons up to their helmets and say, oh, "Evening." I bow deeply. <laughs> Freaking weirdos. Uh, they <laughs> all uh, over in the attempt. <laughs> no, probably not. Okay. Um, so unless unless you want unless you demand an interaction with the police officers, I can certainly arrange that. But uh, they're just, they're just a polite going. nod and keep walking. Yeah, yeah. they're on they're on patrol. Um, um, and after about ten minutes, you um, you reach the gates of fourteen hundred Da Vinci Avenue. Um, it's a walled, uh, it's, it's quite a large wall, and there's a nice wrought iron gate in front of you um, that says Langstrom uh, in big wrought iron letters. And you I can think see this that is it. A, could be, it's a bit of a clue. Yeah, I won't get you to roll investigation in case you fail. <clears throat> Very observant. Iqbal. I'm going to anyway. Yeah, go on then. That's a 12. Yeah, you think it's the right place. Yeah. Um, so the, the gates are closed, but they're not, they don't appear locked. Um, there's a, a gas lamp on um, each pillar where the gates are uh, fixed. 
And you can see that there's a, a driveway leading up to a, a grand house and there's trees along. It looks a very, um, very swanky kind of place, to be honest. Um, yeah, so you're there. What do you do? I'm going to remark that academia clearly pays well in the city. I just go up and knock. You're going to walk up the driveway? Yeah. Or you can knock on the gate. Yeah. Is there a nice garden? Does it have a garden? Yeah, there, yeah there's, there's, um, there's lawns and there's a piss to be Trust the to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. I admire it's, the flowers. I mean, it, it's dark, but, you know, and it's raining, but, you know, it's, it's nice for what you see. Um, I can so, just yeah. see money. <laughs> yeah. You don't see any of that. You just, the guys are shut, yes? Would, would they be like lamp torch lights around the garden or would, would they not bother with that? No, it's a waste of gas and it's very difficult to pipe the gas to different parts of the garden. Um, <laughs> the, the gates are kind of pushed too, but you can see you, all you have to do is just push to open. Okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, you, you walk up to the, the main door? I do. Everyone? Is there yeah. anything odd or amiss in the garden like is there anything that makes us suspicious about his wealth or anything like that i don't know you'll, you'll have to define what you would consider suspicious am i going to find him rather bourgeois oh crikey is it, uh, is it, is it like over the top compensating kind of rich like i'm trying to be impress you or is it no, it appears to be roughly well pitched okay yeah. I'm slightly behind still admiring the roses and I cast um, Jared Craft to make one of them bloom. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you wish to have a go? Have a go. <laughs> it's just a cantrip. <laughs> yeah. Um, as you do this, yeah, one of the um, rose bushes kind of just um, six or seven blooms just kind of open out and they are good old fashioned roses. So they have a lovely sweet scent to them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, Kibo went up to the door and knocked, right? Repeatedly now. <laughs> Repeatedly. Okay, yep. so hearing hearing that sound, I run over and I just like knock with the enthusiasm of a child. Okay. Uh, uh, eventually, um, Wilkins um, opens the door. Um, he sees you guys and he says, oh, uh, welcome. And he kind of looks out and, and to his left and says, oh, is the pool bell not working? I, I should get that fixed. I assumed I'd fixed it already. I do apologize that you had to knock. Had we noted <laughs> peasants? <laughs> As well, if, well, I'm literally it, going to whisper to Gregor, and make sure you break that on the way in. <laughs> so Ig Igbo just, as far as I know, Igbo just ran up and started knocking the door. Yeah, and then I just ignored the ran bell. Up and copied, so so yeah. now that you see the bell, I pull the bell. Uh, roll me, just roll me a d20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she might just break that <laughs> bell work at all i rolled in that one i really need yeah. to pick it yeah you, you you pull it but you don't you, you've probably never come across this little bell so you just basically pull it down about four or five inches and it goes ding dong uh you just put it assuming that you have to put it all the way and there's this kind of crunch noise and and the pull chain just falls down at your feet and, well, and, Gregor, and, and Gregor, never mind and, and instantly wilkin just pales so, oh my goodness i i i never realized it was so broken Oh, if you could just hand it to me. It's broken. Yeah, goodness me. And he, and he clicks the chain and the pull handle and he says, oh, but anyway, please, please come in. Please come in. You have this filthy weather. And he, and he, and he opens the, the double doors so you can walk in. I, I brush my feet and enter. Yes, there's a, there's a lovely um, rug. Or there's a lovely doormat, sorry, that, that's got the... Uh, what, are, what are doormats made of that you wipe your feet on? Bristly thing. Yeah, there's bristly things. There's, there's, there's hedgehogs. <laughs> there's a whole carpet made of hedgehogs and you can just wipe your feet and that's fine. I, I feel uh, the druid's going to have an issue with this. <laughs> oh, so okay, they were dead. <laughs> um, no, it's it's just one of those rough kind of natural material kind of... Yeah. I want to say coconut husk, but it's clearly not. Um, if anyone wants to comment on Facebook and say what are actual doormats made of, I don't know. Same stuff that brooms are made of. And it's, it's coconut husk now. <laughs> it is co it's, it's a coconut. It's very extravagant because coconuts are not native to Edisonia. So it's a coconut husk doormat, which you wipe your wet feet on. And well, I think um, we've got enough money to, to be able to organize to have one. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it certainly appears that way. 
Mm. So, um, because I'm a nerd and I wanted to know, I googled it's made from palm fibers. Uh, coconut palm. Pretty that's what close. I yeah, that's exactly what I said. Almost. Um, I'm going to roll for deception on that. Um, <laughs> it's it was a lot closer than hedgehogs, anyway. So um, you walk inside. He closes the door behind you, and he and he just carefully places the broken uh, pool chain uh, on one of the little uh, little tables by the front door. And he says, um, uh, "If you'd like to, um, I will show you through to uh, Professor Langshong's workshop. If you'd just like to follow me." Lead the way, sir. Yep, that's right. Yeah, um, and you follow him through. Um, it's a very nice house. Uh, it's um, there's a nice kind of foyer area with a a sweeping um, staircase that goes up. It's a polished wooden floor. Um, there's lots of natural materials, probably just recent from recently murdered trees and. Um, he, he takes you through to the east wing of the house um, and through some rather plainer looking doors. Um, and it's like, um, it's like a cloakroom, I suppose. It's, it's pretty plain compared with everything else you've seen. And Wilkins says, well, if you'd just like to uh, remove your jackets and your overcoats. Um, and, and, and we have, um, and he points to some kind of rather beigey colored like lab coat kind of dust coats. He says, if you'd like to put these on, I think it, they'd be more appropriate for you. How intriguing. I go and Why? grab one straight off the thing. Why? Yes. You don't have to. It's just better you don't want to get your your nice clothes dirty, but maybe it doesn't really count for you anyway. So. Thank you very much, Rich. Trust me when I say there are often some odd materials and chemicals in these sorts of places. Hmm. I, I'm sure I've got a child's one that you can wear, Mr. Rickbosa. Thank you. And he pulls out this really cute little one with a little duck on it. <laughs> a cute little fluffy duck on on its left breast. And it's like Is it yellow? They're always yellow. Uh yellow it, well it's it's kind of just a, a slightly darker beige. It's almost a brown colour. And it's got my first lab coat embroidered in it. I ha I hand him my overcoat um and put on the lab coat. Yep. And you, you notice rather annoyingly that he places your coat in one of the coat hooks that's like adult size, so there's no way you'd get it. Um, well, he, yeah. I take off my hooded scarf and hang it up and take one of the okay. coats. Um, so, so um, Wookie, um, you're still affected as previously mentioned. Mm -hmm. And you've also, um, I'm wondering that your, your outer garment is full of food, I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just wondering how you're going to play out this little scenario of taking your cloak off. And also you're still affected as previously mentioned. Um, now, are we just hanging them on, on like normal... Um, oh. Coat hooks, okay. Because yeah. my jacket is extraordinarily heavy with food. <laughs> well, that's no, fine if you want. Just, the jacket itself is very heavy, and then it's laden with food. Okay, and are you hanging it up? Well, first, I'm going to ask if there's another ducky um, coat, because that would be my preference. Uh, he says, well. I have something similar. It doesn't quite have the duck on it, though. Uh, it's got like a chimpanzee, like a, a, a funny monkey. I'll have that one. Cool. It looks like uh, her. <laughs> so I take off this like coat, and the size of this coat, when I take it off, it's about the size, like practically my size. So, yeah. like, suddenly there's half of me because this is a tremendously large coat. Um, and then I put it on the hook, and you just hear the hook bend. Yeah, and then and then everyone hears it snap, and it falls out the wall. Oh, oh goodness! I, I never realised that everything was kind of feeling so uh, broken. Um, no, don't worry about it. That's okay. I pet the coat, my cloak, and I'm like, <clears throat> stay here, and put on the other jacket. Yep, no, that's fine. Uh, you put on the jacket, and it's got um, you. Um, you, you put it on and it's got the little kind of monkey on the left breast. Uh, but what you don't see is on the back it says, I'm a cheeky monkey. I, I, pet, I pet the like little monkey face like yep. delightedly and then continue on. And it talks back to you saying, oh, you're pretty cute too. <gasps> Thank you. I presume we don't hear this conversation. <laughs> we just hear no, it. No, Thank you, you. you just, as far as you know, you just hear Wookie talking to the monk, the picture of a monkey. Yeah. I'm but apologizing this... to the host saying sorry for this one's breaking everything. Oh, uh, th that's okay. Um, you know, she's a, she's a dwarf. It's it's fine. We have insurance for dwarves in the house. Dwarf. This just oh, all goes 
my head completely. Absolutely, you have no idea what they're talking about. Um, and as you once you put your lab coats on, um, the doors, not the ones you came through, but the ones leading out of the room, um, they they open, um, and uh, a tall, elderly human uh, walks out. Uh, he looks probably in his mid to late 70s. Uh, he's a, a, a white beard and moustache and glasses. He's very handsome, in fact, with his glasses and beard. Um, and he wears, he's got like a smoking jacket on, if you, for those who have seen, like a velvet smoking jacket, velvet and silk. And he's, got a, and he's got a smoking cap on as well with a little tassel down the side. He says, oh, but my friends, thank you for coming at such short notice. Are well, you Professor I, Legstrom? Very I sure. am, yes, and you must be um, Sigbo. I put my hand out and shake his hand. Welcome, welcome, Sigbo. You're very welcome in my house. Did you change your name, Ikbo? <laughs> no, I have not. His name is Sigbo. Yes. Never mind. Don't worry. You're Song of the River and you're um, Carswell Dawn or something. Um, you're Anasi. Walkie. And yes, you are definitely You're annoying. Is what you are. Um, yes, the 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 Wookie dwarf. That's right. And we've got uh, now. You're the wolf. You are your wood. Mm -hmm. I wood. can work with wood. Wood, wood. That's fine. Wood, wood. I remember that because it's like woof. And it's very good wood. at working with wood. If you want some of their work, you can find it at Raven's Antiques. Oh, thank you, uh, Wilkins. Uh, make sure you take the young lady's details at the end. I'm always in, uh, I'm always in the market for wood. Um, would you like to come through to my laboratory? Don't forget Gregor. He's here too. Yeah. Um, welcome, Gregor. Oh, thank you, Professor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you, Song, for reminding uh, the professor that I'm here. I'm only seven foot tall, and uh, but no, I, I'm a strong, silent type, which suits the GM just fine. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <clears throat> you proceed through the doors um, to a laboratory, and um, I, I'm not, I'm not going to make any assumptions about what kind of scientific background um, you guys have. I can, I can tell you that Gregor doesn't really have much of a background, or if he has, he wouldn't remember. Um, I've seen these machines before. I probably don't know what they do, but I'm not a stranger to labs. Okay. Yep. Cool. And I'm going to assume everyone else is kind of moderate to low knowledge about the inner workings of a lab. I'm kind I of might just have... frown at everything. <laughs> I might have seen the parts individually, but not yep. our whole collective. Yeah, you're right. I, I can't say I've been in one myself. Okay. Okay. Well, please feel to come into mine. Um, and he shows you and there's like lots of um, there's like benches and there's glass bottles. There's bottles filled with all various kinds of liquids, but there's not too much of that. It's mostly there's lots of um, steel and copper and the, the room has this kind of um, I suppose this kind of smell that reminds you of being near the sea, kind of a bit kind of salty ozone-y. Um, and some of you may notice, actually two of you will definitely notice, actually three of me will definitely notice, um, that the hairs start to kind of prick up on the back of your entire bodies uh, if you're a tabaxi wolf or bear. Um, the others may feel, actually kobolds don't really have hair, do they? Nope. So you don't really feel anything. Um, you, I am saying to Wookie to, and pointing out one of the liquids saying, you should try that one, it's delicious. <laughs> I does anybody stop me? Yeah, I've got a rather oh. firm hold on your like shoulder. <laughs> I go to like reach for it, but uh, but you know, <laughs> I let you stop me. Pull back. Yeah, and, and the professor comes home and says, "Oh no, no, you probably don't want that one. I'll just put this back in the shelf out of your." Ah, reach. come on, that could have been funny. <laughs> oh, I, I I'm not sure that acid is particularly much fun. But anyway, <laughs> come come come. <laughs> Let me, let me tell you more about why I've called you here at such short notice. Now, I've heard uh, amongst, uh, well, amongst what? Uh, amongst the general population that, um, you know, if it's a job that I need doing and it has to be done maybe um, under the scrutiny of the local authorities, that maybe you are the, the mob to do it. Uh, you certainly look like um, you could all be criminals. So... I, I think I've chosen quite well. Um, but look, let me introduce myself. 
Uh, my name is Emmett Langstrom. You can call me Emmett. You don't have to worry about Professor or anything like that. Um, and I have been working for many years on the advancement of science. And you may look around some of this equipment um, about, you know, the all the excitement about the latest discoveries in electricity. Now, people say it will come and go, but I'm not so sure. I think there's definitely uh, a future in electricity. Um, so what I need you to do is just um, get me some equipment, really. That's all. Uh, just some equipment and then maybe um, a, a sub quest. Let's call it a quest. Um, so um, here's the terms and conditions, which I think Wilkins may have indicated earlier. If you can bring me uh, what I'm seeking, then I will pay you the sum of 1000 marks. And he I'm pauses, in. Pauses is, for is, dramatic it, effect. is that a lot? <laughs> it, it is not much. I can take your share. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. I, um, let me elaborate. I'm talking about a thousand marks per person. Yes. Oh, that's what that is a lot. And <laughs> well, um, ears just kind of like perk up a bit. It's like, oh. Yeah. You do, you have have a do you have a tail? And if so, does it wag slightly? <laughs> Uh, it was wagging earlier when I was like looking on everything. You get like the floppy ear, like doggy, like head tilt, looking at everything. A couple oh. of little, oh, that smells like shit. <laughs> and would you also be able to let us know more about this electricity? Uh, well, I once I've told you what it is I need you to do, I can certainly give you a demonstration. Thank you. I like so, to um, look at the equipment would, very like. Hmm. Would we have had electricity before? Like, oh, look, you, you, yeah, you, you've come, you've come across, it? you've come across um, some very primitive, like incandescent light bulbs, um, which seem quite inferior to the gas light lamps, as far as you're concerned. Would we know about static electricity? Um, I'm guessing not, because okay. static doesn't really have much of a use at all, um, as far as science is concerned at this point. So us fair folk are pretty much just like puffed out right now because um, you're definitely feeling a bit odd um <laughs> and you notice as you look at your arms it's kind of, they do look a bit more puffy than usual from where the fur is seated and he says oh, a come fluffy boy right now <laughs> yeah absolutely um so he, he, show, he takes you over to, um to one of his large tables along the table there's um a quite a large um metal metal chest uh it seems to be made of lead as opposed to steel or copper or any other regular kind of metal, it seems to be made of lead. Um, and he takes um, he takes a small key out of his um, smoking jacket and he puts it in the padlock at the front and he takes it off and he lifts up the lid with a it's quite heavy and uh, he says um, he says to Gregor, oh can you just take the other side? And Gregor says, oh of course I can. And and, and between me and me, uh, we lift the lid up like that. He says, oh thank you, and maybe a Gregor, would you be able to um, just extricate the uh, item that's in the chest? And oh yes, of course, that is no problem. And and he lifts out because um, he's a strong bear. He lifts out this large suit, and he and he lays it under instruction from the professor. Professor, he lays it on the table, and it's about forty six foot from um, from boot to collar. Um, it's all kind of one piece. It seems to be made from a very heavy, like canvas material. Um, at the end of the arm, there are gloves, um, which look like they're made out of vulcanized rubber. Um, and at the bottom, there are boots that just seem to be made also out of um, rubber with thick rubber soles. Um, and, but it's completely flat. And uh, he says, um, and and Langstrom says, so okay, so let me just explain. Um, what do you see before you? is at the very forefront of scientific research. And I've been trying for a number of months and years, in fact, to convince the National Institute of Science, of which I was a former fellow, um, to fund some research into some, what will clearly be uh, a life-changing uh, series of experiments. However, however, they threw me out. I'm no longer allowed in the Institute because they call me a quack. Can you believe that? A quack. And at this point, uh, Wookie, you notice that um, the duck that's on Iqbo's um, little kind of jacket starts quacking at you. 
<laughs> uh, I just start clapping. Uh, and what are you kind of looking really intently at it, or kind of describe the scene? Um. Oh, like you know, you would just start quacking, and I just would think it's cute. And um, so, like you know, I'd I'd start clapping, but not so loud that like I would feel like I'm interrupting him. Mm-hmm. But like you know, if if someone's intoxicated, they don't necessarily pick up on necessary social graces while someone's no. talking. No. Or volume of voice. <laughs> I, I'm reasonable, no. clearly not. So um, Langston soft- seems slightly disconcerted that you started clapping when he talked mm-hmm. about being expelled from the Institute of Science. And uh, he looks to the others and uh, he, he looks at uh, an ace and said, uh, is, she, is, is she always like that? Uh, it's a bit off-putting, I have to say. You uh, have best jackets here. Can <laughs> I get one Is it of possible your... to put my hand over her mouth? <laughs> you can certainly try. Look, you'll be a dex roll against an opposed dex roll. Well, at disadvantage. While he's trying to sort of reach. Yeah, let, Wookie, let, Wookie's I... disadvantaged. Okay, so Wookie would let this happen. Okay. But then he would also put her hand over his mouth. <laughs> like. <laughs> uh, and if you want, if, if unless Ikbo is comfortable with this, he you can oppose the dexterity if you wish. So is that a separate roll? Yeah. Uh, it was well, twenty. It was twenty-two for the first one. That's fine. And twenty-five for the second one. Yeah, he he kind of flaps his hand away, your hand away from his mouth. Uh, While this okay. hand reaching is going on, I'm going to say uh, small height does not agree with fairies. Um, I, I don't quite know what to make of that. Uh, most fairies are quite short. But anyway, I'm going to move on because this is clearly distracting and they're doing their own thing. So that's fine. Um, yes. Now, this is a suit. This is the suit that got me expelled as a fellow from the National Institute of Science. Now, How did it do that? Your, my hand is over your mouth. You can't speak. Oh, it's <laughs> him. Yeah, so I, I suppose if I played the game right, I could just mute you now. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Actually, I'm just going to do that. There we go. Um, so uh, uh, until, uh, and until Igbo says he's moved his hands, uh, Wookie's now muted. Um, although Wookie still thinks that she can be heard. Um, now, somebody asked me a question. I, I'm sorry, who was that? Facebook feeds stuffed up, I think. Who says that? It's his life. It's his life. Other that was my end. Yeah, pay your bill. <laughs> Still says we're live, so right. gonna... continue. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. Somebody asked me a question about being expelled. Oh no, that was the yeah, it was the muffling noise that, that confused me. How um, did a suit get you expelled? Well, it's not so much the suit, but it's the purpose of which I intend for it, which is cutting edge science. Um, it just ruffled a few feathers uh, in a figurative sense. You have to understand. I, 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 obviously, being a woman, you wouldn't understand much of science. But let me just say that um, ruffling feathers means that they don't actually have feathers on them. It's like a, it's like a, an expression where um, they kind of get upset. Mm. Do, do you understand now? And then call you a quack. Well, yes, there's definitely a, an, an extended uh, metaphor going on with ducks and quacks and feathers. I, I can see that. Um, so what I'm trying to do is two things, and you are critical for both. But I won't tell you what the first, I won't tell you the second part. I will tell you the first part for now. If that's successful, I will definitely tell you about the second. So the first thing is, um, and he points, there's a, a copper box on the front of the, uh, co- the heavy material suit. And he, he opens up a little compartment and it's, it's empty. He says, this suit needs quite a lot of power. And within this suit, there needs to be a small file of um, a metallic substance. Um, when I was working, when I had a laboratory at the Institute of Science, I had it kept there because uh, I was expelled and they confiscated some of my equipment. Um, I was lucky to leave with the suit. Um, however, uh, they took this critical component. So I do need that to be liberated from the National Institute of Science, if that's that that's what I'm asking you to do. Un- unknowingly to them? 
Well, I think that's kind of implied by the fact I'm in hiring you and paying a thousand marks each to do it. And what is this piece you wish us to acquire? Um, at, this, at this point, I'm also dropping my hand from her mouth. Okay. Oh, hold on, I better do this. One. Hold on. There we go. So um, yes, it's um, is a there's a, a metallic cylinder that fits in this here, and it's it, it was originally labelled XP zero. Um, so I would wish you to go to the National Institute of Science and retrieve XP zero. XP zero, a small cylinder from whereabouts do you do you have a layout of this place, this institution? Um, no, no. Um, uh, it's 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 a bit difficult to explain because um, women aren't allowed in there. So well, we'll be going in there. So yes, yes. <laughs> some of us, some of us will be. <laughs> well, that we are resourceful, sir. Tell us where it is. Well, now, and, and here's the rub. Um, I'm not entirely sure. It's a big place. I'm not and it's sure been, where it is. It's a, it's a big place, and it's been a few months since I was last there. So um, it will either be in my lab, or it may be in, in the basement, in the vaults, where they keep um, unnecessary equipment. I, I, I just don't know. That's fine. Leave that to us. I, I'm sure amongst you there must be some keen, sharp, intelligent, maybe not the bear, but some sharp, <laughs> keen minds um that can investigate you, you do have investigation skills i presume of course good I, i'm glad I'm otherwise this whole evening would have been a waste of time <laughs> i take yes. it as he makes this comment about our intelligence that he looks from one to the next and like you know is a bit starts to get concerned about who he is selected to some degree yeah, it, it, yeah, he kind of starts with who he assumes is the most intelligent, which he assumes is an ace. Are you sure? Because yeah. she's a woman. <laughs> well, yeah. now, now hold on, young lady. It, it, intelligence isn't just restricted uh, to the male or the female brain. What we find in science is that although th there seems to be a barrier of communication between the female brain and the rest of the body and the mouth, so it's not that the intelligence isn't there. It's just that women don't seem to be able to express themselves very well. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, under, it's natural you made that mistake because, well, as I've just mentioned, you are female. And... So I, I, I see um, Anais as probably being the most intelligent. And then in no particular order, although absolutely and definitely descending order, uh, probably yourself, Song of the River. You've, um, you've probably got a mind somewhere. Um, then I'm thinking, uh, I, I think Timber probably has a keen mind, being um, of slightly uh, lupine extraction. And then it starts to get a bit kind of foggy, um, where Carswell, Lani and Igbo are kind of fighting in a, in a rather intellectually sexy three-way um, for who's the least intelligent. And my friend Gregor, well, you know, I've heard that he is very good. He is very, um, uh, not charismatic, what's the word? Hairy. He's very hairy and he's there. He's strong and he's holding up the rest of the group. Oh, yes, I think that is a fair reflection. Thank you. Um, so intelligence isn't everything, but in most ways, it's exactly everything. So um, some of this will require intelligence. Some of this may require strength and dexterity. Um, and look, for those of you, and I, I don't think any of you would have been inside the Institute, apart from the small museum at the front, um, there are guards there. Uh, there are obviously people, uh, academics such as myself, um, although not quite so good as me. Um, they're working there in their own private laboratories. There's a library there. Um, so the idea is to kind of, um, yeah, yes, Carbo, you're pointing at me. <laughs> No, that's fine. That's fine. It's normally when people put their fingers this front in for, in for my face. Um, no, that's fine. Uh, uh, sorry. How, sorry. How late do they work in their laboratories? Oh, well, that depends on the individual. Some will work all through the night. Um, mm. Some will rarely wake up until midday. Um, it really depends on the individual. Now, the institute itself is open from nine to four. Um, so and it's that's well for, past closing hours. What about the areas we may need to access? Would there be possibly anyone there? Um, well, as I say, there's security guards and patrols and, and yes. 
There, there's a lot of valuable things inside that building, <clears throat> um, including the museum. It's a very, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would say yes. There's, there's likely to be people if you're not careful. Yes. Stunned into silence. While well, this that's... conversation is going on, can I roll investigation to see what I can deduce from the suit itself? Like what kind of condition? In? Can I see what it's for? Can I, I'm trying to guess. Um, sure. You can roll... You can roll with advantage because he's already given you a pretty good description. You can get as close to it as you like. So, All right, cool. so advantage is when you roll two d20s and take the higher number. Hey, me a game master. Uh, without the um, stuff I add on top, it's nineteen. So that's 19, uh, 23. 23? Yeah, that's good. Um, so ask me some questions about what you want to know about it. All right. Um, the arm pieces, does it look like it's got gloves or does it have accessories on it? Uh, it seems that the gloves are kind of built onto the ends of the sleeve, so there's no actual gap. Okay. Um, does it have any uh, wiring or obtrusions that would... Uh, I know I know it's probably... It needs electricity, but mm -hmm. does it look like it would be... This is going to sound dumb, but would it shoot electricity or something like that? There's no external wiring that you can see. The only thing that seems odd about the suit, apart from its unusual construction in terms of being a, a very much a one piece, is the is the copper box that's on the front chest. Okay. Has he, he hasn't indicated what the suit's actually for, has he? No, he hasn't. He just says what he needs for it to begin with. Okay. Can I do an insight check on this man? Of course you can. Um. Nine. Yeah, he seems absolutely legit to you. Can, okay. can I? Can we buy passive insight? Can I just deduce if he's lying, or would you like me to roll for it? What's passive insight? Just it's like passive perception, just like general knowledge. Uh, what's your passive perception? Does he give him the willies? <laughs> passive, passive perception's twenty-two. Um, yeah, you. I mean, he seems a bit eccentric and. He seems to be hiding something, but he was pretty open about hiding something from you anyway, but the fact yeah. he hasn't told you everything. So apart from those couple of things, he seems pretty square, to be honest. He seems pretty legit. Yep. Given that Anais's job is to acquire stuff for her lord, I guess, would mm. she have heard of this guy before? Like, is he known, either infamous or normal? Roll me history. Oh, interesting. Hmm. It's because I'm making it up as I go along. Well, that's a good pick. Um, 19. 19? Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I think the, the wider world, maybe not so much because he's a very academic person, but for those in, in certain circles, um, Professor Langstrom, Langstrom would have been heard of. Um, before his expulsion from the National Institute, he was um, a, a respected scientist in his field and his um, pursuit of um, electricity um, and its advancement counter to the general feeling of the culture at the time um, is well known. So okay. he would have been appearing in, um, I suppose, some of the bigger newspapers, newspapers in small articles, maybe. Yeah. Like scientific journals. Definitely scientific journals. Yeah. I would have just one more question for you. Yes. Uh, do you mean harm with this suit? Do you mean, do I mean harm? Well, absolutely not, dear sir. This is about scientific pursuit. Okay, so scientific pursuit, what, what does this suit do? Uh, well, now look here, I, 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 think I've, I think I did mention earlier that I, I'm going to tell you the first part, which I duly did, and then once, and if that's successful, then I would go on to the second part. I, right, I can't give if. you all this. I can't give you all this knowledge on the basis if you fail and we you won't. start to get questioned. Yeah, it's it's what I've written. I've actually written a paper about this somewhere. It's um, it's called oh. something called the deniability deniability of plausibleness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the more you know, the more you might be in danger. I'd say that's a reasonable outcome, and if it, if it, we do not succeed, or if we do succeed, and you do not hold again, like true to your word, mm. 
we can always return the item or destroy it. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, that's, we that's, that's definitely one interpretation of what I've said. No, look, I mean, when you leave here tonight, I will give you half the payment each up front. You'll have 500 marks in your dirty hands to do with as you wish. Um, yes, your hands are pretty clean. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, again, I, I feel I shouldn't have to explain this, but given the kind of femininity of the audience, um, it's an expression to, to get one's hands dirty and to spend your money on dirty things. It doesn't mean dirt. You Do we have a time it. frame for this task? Uh, as soon as possible. Is that is that a good time frame? Let's do it tonight. I I wish for surveilling the, the place. Coat, but... the, the coat, because like my brain is just thinking about how my hands may be dirty now because he's like... <laughs> yeah. you can, I think you'd definitely be brushing your hands quite vigorously right now. Right. <laughs> While I'm, I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> While I'm keen to get this done and get the remainder of our money, uh, some of us are not quite all... Um, what's the word? I don't know. You know Inebriated. the word. Sober. <laughs> what, sorry? Say that again. No. Sober. Sober? Oh, yes, yes. Shall, shall we uh, maybe look at doing this tomorrow night? Why don't we recon re do some reconnaissance first? True, that'd be good. And away from <coughs> our host here, who's probably got better things to do than listen to us plan our heist. <laughs> well, I don't know. I find you all rather entertaining, as a matter and of fact. More that. importantly, none of us, we're not exactly appropriately addressed for this situation. Well, <gasps> I, 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 I have to say, for, I do have to say, my good lady, for a woman, you are absolutely appropriately dressed in my eyes. I think you Yeah. Right. Can we keep the lab coats? Well, I'd rather you left them here in case I have other small children coming to view my experiments. Yeah, we can bring it back, but we'll, like... have, we'll get some made for you. It's okay. Yeah, we I'd rather you left it here, actually. Uh, uh, what was the name of this institution? The, the National Institute of Science. Um, so, um, kind of stepping slightly outside of Professor Langstrom, it would have been diagonally opposite... Um, the green fairy let me just ah. being in town for a while we would know where the location is oh yeah it's it's very central um let me just uh well yeah you can see um it's there okay. um, so you were you were there and obviously uh professor langstrom is up here and so it's it's one of the it's pretty much the largest building in the center of the city yes so yeah. What's the name of this file we're, we're going to find? XPO. XP0. XP0, actually, yes. Oh, zero. O is a letter, zero is a number. Zero. Yeah. It's hard to tell when you write it down. <laughs> <laughs> zero. Zero. Yeah. Well, thank you, good sir. Well, thank you for your time and coming here. Now, as you leave, um, if you uh, once you hand your lab coats back, you will be given the 500 marks. He looks at Wookie particularly. <laughs> you will get your money on the way out. Um, and I bid you a good evening. And I will show... Um, I, I, I say, Gregor, can you uh, place the suit carefully back into the uh, chest? Well, yes, of course, Professor. And he folds it up nicely and lifts it. And then he puts the lid back down. I will leave you for the lock and the chain, so I think you better that. Um, yeah, and so um, Gregor is the first to walk out, and he um, his coat was slightly too uh, small, so it's a bit kind of, yeah, it looks like a, a large teddy in a small shirt. Aww. I know. <laughs> hey, Yogi, wait for Boo Boo. <laughs> Ranger um, Yeah, so he puts it, and he's, he gets um, um, a wad of uh, paper money in his paw. And he puts it into it inside his flannel shirt jacket. So yeah. And the rest of you, uh, you can. Yeah, Ekbo will leave, um, and he'll just look up at the coat rack and wait for someone to come next. Yeah, I I come over and like you know give him his coat. A... I, I debate whether a dwarf can reach as well. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> you're both very <laughs> the same height. Yeah. Uh, oh, what a, Tim what a would help probably be are. nearby, so he'll just probably just pick up and. Hand. Yeah, I saw the coats. I probably <laughs> would have been like jumping, trying to like push it off the hook. 
Yeah. Timber will right. just come up and grab them and bring them down for you. So Thank you, good the, sir. I'll hang on my lap coat and put my. So, in the uh, the most astounding role play ever committed to screen, you get your coats, and and uh, you are invited now to. You've all had your five hundred marks, um, and you are invited to leave the building. I, I I wait for everyone else to leave, and then I go back. So, unless someone else is delaying. Um, well, I, I'm putting my coat on and then patting the the monkey goodbye. Um, but I don't like necessarily linger. Okay. Is a monkey? The monkey. Coat monkey. Coat. Oh, sorry. I was shuffling <laughs> ah. to that point. Yeah. And and it, I finally like you know see the writing on the back of the coat and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just like uh, I'm gonna make my way out, but I'm going to inquire as to if anybody else is staying in town as opposed to living in town. No, everyone now. Everyone is at the point where they all live in the city now. Okay. Yeah. So would boss man have a house there, or am I going to a hotel? Um, how long have you been in town? Uh, I mean, for for this meeting, we actually live in Voltaire. Oh no, I lie. I'm there to pick up my um parasol, which I'm carrying. So I already have a hotel. Um, I mean, why? Well, okay. If not, Gregor offers. Um, there's room on the floor where he lives. So. Okay. Uh, so uh, I got to go back inside. Yeah, and it's be like, uh, there's only uh, 490 marks here. Uh, you missed out on 10. You're 10 short, sir. Really? <laughs> um, are you are you rolling? De are you deceiving him or? I'm trying to. Uh, roll oh. roll deception. Uh, 11. Yeah, it's, um, Wilkin, because it's Wilkins that you go back to. He says, oh, I'm pretty sure that. Uh, I mean, I counted it out myself. I, I think you need to count again. Uh, I, I shall do that. Uh, I recount it. Oh, no, my mistake. I forgot to carry the one. Uh, or the ten, one would assume. But no no, no matter. My, my um, apologies, sir. No worries. Um, obviously, if you, yeah. Good night. Good night. And I walk out the door. You hear that there's about six different locks get clicks on the <laughs> door on the way out. Um, once we're all outside. Uh, so uh, when shall we meet tomorrow? Shall we meet back when he wishes. Good night, and I walk off to my house. Shall we meet back at the tavern tomorrow, same time, eight? Uh, will we be welcome there without an invitation? Oh, I, I, think, I think that is unlikely. I mean, you know, maybe men, maybe, but uh, ladies are, you know, not. Uh, okay. Ladies. Well, is there, um, is there, what's a, what's a good place to meet up then? A more uh, lonely the tavern? <laughs> There's, oh yeah, look, there's other regular taverns where women are almost treated up to the rate of second class. <laughs> Otherwise, we could just meet up at the museum, but at what time? It opens Evening? at nine. During the day? It opens at nine. Let's walk her through. I'd like to see ah, the museum. The museum part. Okay. At <laughs> night at the museum, in the morning. Aren't there like gardens or something like around the, the building? Yeah. So yeah, it's theoretically... Quite garden and just look like picnickers. And we is, can... it, is it the type of museum that just allows patrons to walk through? Um, like yeah, look. Is it gated? It's like, um, it's like a, I guess, a regular museum where you go in through an entrance and yeah. then you, yeah. yeah that's what I'm saying, like just be patrons for the day and learn the layout of where everything is. That's a good idea, Iqbal. Bye. In the morning, then, and all I'll right, walk so up in you the direction. So you will to your appropriate um, lodgings. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, unlike regular D and D, you're in your house, so everything pretty much goes okay, unless you tell me <laughs> otherwise. Um, so we'll move forward to the next day, um, and you meet outside the. Well, you can meet out by the gates. There's like. Um, Obviously, there's like ornate grounds and flowers and flower beds and trees and everything around the actual institute itself. Um, so you will meet at that gate that leads in there um, at nine o'clock. What's the policy on entering the museum with weapons? Uh, you tell me what you think that policy may be. <laughs> no, no visible weapons. Yeah, it's not Texas, right? You can't you, have, you can't open carry into a museum. So. Seeing as I carry a cutlass and a rifle on my back, I'm going to have to leave these in my lodgings. 
Yeah, that seems sensible. I, I'll assume you kind of worked this out. Now, actually, I'm going to be I'm, I'm going to be mean because you didn't say you weren't, so you did. So you brought your weapons with you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Always be prepared, hey, fighter man. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I am fighter. Well, I, I, I was prepared. See, I've only got. Uh, see, I had, I yeah. had given up my cutlass and rifle, but I still got my knuckle dusters. So. And and Gregor kind of um, pats you gently on the chest with the back of his hand in a very camaraderie kind of way. He says, "You know, the problem with your fighter is that unlike me, you don't carry your weapons with you all the time." Timber will just catch and just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, we, we I have, too have hands. We are, yeah, but your your hands are teeny tiny baby like hands, and everyone else here has like women hands that are soft and do knitting. I just like extend my claws. Look at my hands, and they are not. Okay, maybe carving for a song, but you know, Anais probably does uh, needlework and reading and things that women do. And Wookie, I do not know what Wookie does. She drinks and she knows <laughs> things. Stabbing is yeah. about right, but not necessarily the the, the reading. Yeah. So, um, you know, what, what do you do now with cutlass and the rifle, Mister? I'm extravagant weapon man. <laughs> well, it, it would uh, saying my hand has been forced. I, I I'm well, my going hands to... are forced. <laughs> I'm I I'm guessing you guys are going to go inside. I'm going to scout around the outside. Oh, split the party! You're great. <laughs> um, that's fine. Okay. Can I uh, find well, not a, the... like someone that I'm gonna like use or charm to be a tour guide? Um, you can because I would love to play a third character. Yeah, sure, sure. Why not? <laughs> yes, there's. Uh, if you go into the onto the museum steps, there's a little kiosk, um, and there's um. Oh, you tell me. What do you want there to be? Uh, a gentleman in a dapper suit with a name tag of like Bryce or Bob and one moment stop it and I want um, <laughs> Bryce or Bob to um, basically give do the tour and go like oh on our left is such and such building and this has been here uh -huh. for ages and, and, and that's, not, that's not a Bryce or Bob that's his name Bryce or Bob no it's, it's, actually, Bob. it's actually got Bryce slash Bob <laughs> yeah it's how he that? identifies I'm Bryce Bob <laughs> Um, you can call me Slash for short. Um, he's also Russian. Um, so, uh, okay, so you would need to... How are you going to convince me to do that for you then? Persuasion. Go on then. Right. Okay. Nineteen. Stop it. Nineteen. Yep, yeah, that's that's okay. Uh, and Bryce, Bryce slash Bob looks at you and says, "Well, okay. I mean, it's it, it seems fairly quiet today." Um, he looks at his pocket watch. Says, "Oh, look, I can spare you an hour if that's okay." Sure. Okay. Um, so, how rather many... than making you um, engage in the conversation, I guess the leading questions I'm going to ask you during our conversation would be like what certain wings of the building would be, and I'm trying to gauge where security might be, visible security. <sighs> Um, and he explains that, oh, you know, uh, basically what he does is he explains the layout of the museum, but just the museum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he says, oh, you know, uh, seeing as you've come to the uh, museum, Mom, what's your particular interest? What do you think you would like to see most in the museum? I... <sighs> I, I don't understand such things, of course. I am just a well, woman. Well, you are just a, uh, just a woman, of course. Exactly. Maybe we we'll start with the easy things. Maybe, um, oh, look, there's a, there's a botany section where you can look at nice, pretty little flowers. Oh, my ears perk up when I go to the botany section. <laughs> oh, you're not wait oh, you're not waiting for the guide? Literally uh, doesn't. She, no. <laughs> she, seems to need, she seems to know where she's going. You can follow her if you like. She'll probably be asking <laughs> all about them. I'm assuming you gestured toward the area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a sign that says botany this way. Yeah, yeah I'm gone. <laughs> My uh, husband is a, a collector of uh, mechanical items and... Oh, you married, are you, madam? Oh, okay. All right. Also, one would, one would not be so as improper as to come out uh, without being properly engaged. But he is a, a collector of sorts, so I would be most curious if one could see that to see if your collection rivals his. I suppose, uh, and, I, and I don't wish to insult your intelligence, ma'am, but I guess I need to know what sort of things he might collect because... The word collection implies 
like literally everything in the universe as we know it. Oh, understandably good. So I was thinking more along the lines of electricity, I believe it's pronounced. Oh, you're thinking of electricity, ma'am. Um, yes, it is. So my apologies. My, forgive my ignorance. No, no, no. There's, it's, un it's totally understandable. Um, well, I can, I can certainly, um, we've got an exhibit here um, called The Modern World. Um, I can quickly show you, if you like, with you and your chums. How exciting. Please do. <clears throat> okay. So um, while he walks um, to the Modern World exhibition, uh, Song's now also separated from the party. And I'll come back to Song in a minute. I'm going to go to Carswell. Um, so what are you doing, Carswell? Um, I'm pretty much just going to do a slow walk around the... Now, um, trying to remember what the picture looked like. There was, uh, what, what was it, a stone fence around the whole thing? Um, there's, and well, that, it's, it's a low wall with raw iron railings. All right. Would it be... So, I, obviously, I can't enter inside the University of War Weapons, but am I allowed to walk the gardens? Yeah, you can walk the gardens, that's fine. Okay. Well, I'm just going to walk the gardens while looking towards the university. Um, I want to do a perception check um, for maybe, I don't know, guard towers or anything that could be any of security means. Right. Well, so roll me, um, roll me an investigation then, because you're, look, you're looking for something quite specific. Although I'm not sure that this isn't, this isn't a castle, so guard towers may not be existing, but um, let's see. Let's see oh, what you bugger. Got. See, I was hoping to go for a perception, but investigation's yeah. terrible for no, me. No, you're looking for something. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, four. Four? Um, <laughs> it seems like there could be a museum inside. Yeah, let's and get maybe, all these and, bad rolls out the way early, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's terrible. Yeah. And, 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 possibly, and possibly there could be an Institute of Science inside the building, too. Cool, I haven't found it yet. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> so just out of interest so you've got you're wearing a cutlass and you've got a rifle slung over your shoulder uh yeah mm, okay um as, as as you walk past um, a group of small children in the gardens they all look at you scream and run away <laughs> okay yeah cool well is it cool is it scary <laughs> your thing I, I don't know um yeah <laughs> It is what it is, I suppose. Um, yeah, so that, that's you done. So um, I'm going to go to Song now, who's looking at the botany section. There's lots mm -hmm. of plants. Um, you'll be uh, in, interested to know there's lots of plants from like different parts from the world. So you'll, there's a, there will be a, a, a Tokongan section. I and there's look at it like, oh, home. Yeah. Yeah. You, and, um, and then yeah. I kind of remember I'm supposed to actually feel like looking at the place in general so yep. um while i'm in there i'll just well as i'm wandering the area um is it i'm um, completely walled off like separate part of the building or are there other doors that lead from the museum into the main building there are there are between different sections of the museum there's like archways that a door goes in and the door shuts presumably at some point but they're open at the moment where you are is like um, I suppose it's like a large glass house, so it's kind of um, you know like a large greenhouse. So it's glass, leaded glass, and brickwork, and it's quite fancy schmancy, and it's quite humid in there and quite warm. Yeah. Perfect. I just yeah, and then I get sidetracked again and like cast yeah. Druid Craft on yeah, a couple you, of plants and make them. Well, and and you do better. see a few butterflies flapping flapping around as well. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Perfect. I'm basically designing a world just to keep song forever in the glass house. <laughs> I'd, I'll just roll in a ball of wool in a minute as well, so you can. <laughs> All right. So for the rest of you, um, an ace. You seem to be on mute, but that's okay. I, I, I don't need to talk to you, I suppose. Or do I? I know. I, I know. Kira's getting coffee, so I'm not going to disturb her too much. But um, yeah, don't, don't, don't go there. <laughs> no. Um, so we will go to the others who are with um, uh, an ace, and you are taken through to a, a fairly large area. And it, you, the first thing you kind of notice is that kind of smell from the professor's laboratory last night. You see some of the similar equipment. Um, there's a lot of stuff in like glass cases, um, and then in the middle of the room, um, there's like um, a railing that goes in a large circle, probably about um, twenty foot across. And in the middle, there's a large tower that seems to be made entirely of copper. And on top, there's like a large kind of sphere that 
seems to be made of chromium or chromium steel or something like that. Um, it's quite impressive. It's like uh, ten foot tall. Um, all the all the cases have got labels for what the different things are, and there's about ten different cases of exhibits, I should say. Yeah. Is this area under like scrutiny? Like, are there people? Are there guards standing against the yeah, wall? Yeah, there's there's about three or four guards in this particular area. Yeah, they've got nice little Timber. uniforms. Yeah, double. Timber will double just be going around. Um, would I be put a floppy ear head tilt, like just looking at everything? <laughs> cool. Oh, would I be past my headache or am I still recovering? Yeah, you're past your headache this time. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. so, so what, what's the group doing in this, in the, in the modern world exhibit? I'm going to. So hang on. So Wookie's with us at the moment, isn't she? Yeah. Yep. Uh, I am going to subtly hip check her and knock her gently into one of the cases so I can observe how, what the guard's reactions is. All right, so <laughs> you're going to do, you, no, you're, all I need you to do, Wookie, is you need to do a deck saving throw. Okay. Don't do badly. <laughs> if you break your ear. <laughs> Where is my dex? 16. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> All right, now actually, uh, Nace, I need you to roll a d20 as well. Have you got one there? Yeah. Just the d20 on its own? Yeah. Nothing on top of it? Just the d20 on its own, as previously 16. mentioned. Huh? 16. Okay. Um, you um, go to quite, you know, um, quite for forcibly uh, hip nudge her, um, and Wookie manages to get out of the way. So she, it's it's a rather odd scene as you kind of jerk your hip sideways and <laughs> just kind of steps back slightly. Yeah. And so the end result of that is not, nothing happens. <clears throat> oh. uh, I'll I'll try to catch you as you like seem to like fall past me. <laughs> oh no no she doesn't fall I mean. I, I was hoping that somebody would roll a natural one and just go crashing into a glass cabinet, but <laughs> but no, that I leave that to Carswell with his low rolls. Would uh, I <laughs> would I have picked up that you are trying to kind of nudge me into it, or like you know how how well would I know your habits? I haven't communicated this. I've just stuffed up. Okay. <laughs> um. So Igbo, are you doing anything in this room? Um, at the moment, I'm just sort of like just putting my hand up against the glass, sort of trying to feel how strong it is. Like, um, it's, oh, look, it, it's not, I mean, we, we don't live in an era of toughened glass. It's a glass cabinet. Yeah. Um, it's quite big. It's quite a large pane of glass. It's probably um, eight foot by eight foot, something like that. It's, um, yeah. and, in, and in the side, you see um, um, various things labeled as magnets and dynamos. Uh, so I'm going to ask uh, the, just the guard next to me, not the yeah. career arms. Be like, so what? What are these? How strong are these magnets? Oh, um, well, from what I hear from the uh, people who use them, um, they're fairly strong. You, you know, um, I I don't know much about magnetism myself. I just assume it's. I mean, I've seen people use magnets, but I just assume it's like kind of magic or something like that. I I, I yeah, I don't know if they're strong. I don't, I don't think they can lift heavy items, but um, they do this kind of weird thing. Whereas if, if you get two of them together, they kind of clonk together and they kind of get stuck. Can we have demonstration of this? Uh, not really, no. They're kind of in a glass cabinet for... Do, do they then get opened up for demonstrations like this? Um, I believe sometimes um, one of the cleaning ladies opens it up to do a bit of dusting. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Does she do demonstrations? No, she's a cleaning lady, as I think I mentioned. Oh, I was hoping that if she was out and open just to have a demonstration to see it work. Well, I mean, I, I can only assume, sir, that if there were a demonstration of scientific methodology, then it wouldn't be a woman doing it anyway. That, that is I mean, true. You, that is you true. must understand that. That is I mean, true. All you, all you get is like shopping lists and kittens and things that make them smile. <laughs> that's, that's not scientific, sir. 
So I mean, no disrespect. I and he, he's looking around to make sure there's no women listening. But he says, you know, obviously, I I I think the only way, I think the only way you can get in here as a woman is if you've got a duster in your hand. Uh-huh. So Kimber were just kind of like. Ugh. They, they, they do look kind of dusty at the moment. When is she in next? <laughs> I, I really don't know. You seem to be taking an awful lot of interest in the dusting of this place. Sir. Oh, i just commenting on the state of it. I mean, the big central one is looking very neat and shiny. These yeah. outer ones don't look as nearly as impressive. Oh, we know why, though, don't you, sir? Why is that? It's because they're magnets, so they attract the dust. Ah. Yeah, you see? Oh, I, I may not be a scientist, but I know pretty much everything that goes on in here, you see? Nothing yeah, gets magnets. past your sharp mind. Exactly right, sir. Thank you for noticing. Yeah. All right. Well, have a good evening. Uh, well, it's, it's uh, okay. I mean, it's quite early in the day still, but, you know. Oh, my mistake. Morning. Yeah. Have a good morning. morning. Yeah, good morning to you, too. It was a long night. I will take your word for it, sir. And he walks off gladly. <laughs> 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 All right. Who else is in that room? So, Rookie, you're in the room. Um, I don't know. Does any of them seem particularly interesting, either intricate or shiny? Uh, there's lots of okay. shiny things in there. There's a lot of metal things. Yeah. Um, well, I, uh, I don't know. I probably like come up to something that like, you know, is in a glass cage and put my hands against it and like, you know, appearing in. Yeah. Um, but uh, but and I'm I'm also looking around for like bottles because I know that at the end of the day the thing that we're looking for is, you know, some kind of liquid. Is uh, it? You know, I was going to say uh, that's not I don't that's not my recollection, but I'm going to let your character go with that for now. Uh, there is a there is a glass cabinet um, and there's various different bottles and jars and they've all got different labels on. Uh, and next to that, there's a diorama. For those who like dioramas. Okay. Um, I think we've, well, I'm going to go to the guide and say, I, I think I've learned everything I need to from this trip. Your education has been most solicitous, sir. Um, fine words for such a fine young lady. Thank you very much for coming. Oh, and thank you. Thank you. I'm young. Have a good day. Yeah. So that um, leaves that leaves Timber, Lani. So Timber, are you doing anything in that room? Uh, uh, Timber is just very distracted and overwhelmed by everything. So he's just looking in every cabinet, and he's um, if there's like a like a plaque or something with like um, a description of what's going on, it's taking him a very long time to read it because reading comments not really a strong suit. So he's sitting there and just he's pointing at it, and then he's just like quietly like sounding everything out and trying to make sure he reads it okay so oh. do you do you as as you're doing this because you obviously you've given a pretty good description there do you look at the diorama um yeah uh, probably would at, at some point would go over to the diorama and have a look at it cool what's um, up oh, like is it something that would attract our attention does um, does well, it you've already, you've already left so clearly it didn't attract your attention no i haven't left i sent the guide on his way Oh, he, um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, does yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Does it look like you're having trouble with a diorama? Because we've traveled together, so I know that your reading is not your strong suit. Yeah. So I would probably come in, like, with nothing better to do in my mind. Um, like, you know, help you read it. Anything that was a bit hard? Um. Yeah, probably. There might be, like, one or two words while <laughs> I'm, like, Hi! trying to sound it out. Right. <laughs> I'm down. I was going to say, that scared me. Um, um, yeah, uh, Timber probably would need a bit of help with some of the words and like asking, like having just just asking you about like how to uh, say the word and what the word means. Um, just because, again, he's um, he's yeah, he's because he's, <clears throat> he's had experience like traveling with you. He is looking to you to kind of like guide him with this sort of thing because he's like, I don't know this thing. Help. Plus, <laughs> and and I very enjoyably like take on this role of like teacher. Um, so like I'm pointing at the words and like explaining them, and for as much as I understand the words, like explain what they mean. But with the scientific stuff, I may not know all the ins and outs of the words on the board. Okay, so you um, okay, so Wookie and Timber, you and maybe um, uh, an Ace as well. 
uh, you proceed your way along to the diorama, which is um, next to the one that Timber was previously looking at. Um, and so the diorama is a large, it's, it's still in glass, but there's um, like a life-size mannequin of um, a human in a laboratory. And the, um, the legend at the front um, says oh, just... um, the power of the ether, um, uh, future power source question mark. And what you see is um, a, a human male mannequin um, doing research in a, in a mock-up laboratory. And he's holding, uh, he's got a pair of tongs and he's holding um, in the pair of tongs um, a small, um, it's about three inches. And he's holding it in his tongs. So there's a small silver cylinder. And the legend describes that um, scientists are beginning to unlock the powers of the ether um, for a limitless power supply and more research is needed, but they feel that uh, uh, in maybe 40, 50 years that this power could be harnessed for the good of mankind. And in brackets, possibly womankind too. <laughs> How big is this diorama? Uh, the diorama is probably about oh, 12, 15 foot long and about six foot, seven foot deep. Okay. So it takes up a, a fair space. <clears throat> I am going to, so who's who's near near us at this point? That was myself, Timber and Wookie, was that yeah, correct? Basically, basically yeah. Song and Carswell are the only ones not with you. Uh, and Gregor's with you as well. Although okay. he's kind of just doing his own thing, hands in pants pocket, just kind of looking and admiring especially a lot of like the steel heavy industry kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, um, I'm going to point out the fact that the ether as a power source would likely also power a suit. I, I don't come out right out and say it because I don't know who's listening, but I'm going to mention that this <clears throat> might be an interesting battery for a suit. Well, presumably, presumably, if you're looking at that, the diorama, the, you're standing with Wookiee and Timber anyway, because they're looking at it as well. Yeah, true. Igbo, are you with us? I'm in the same room. I'm not next to you. All right, yeah, cool. But I'm going to say that to those two and just see, like, just say it out loud. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm just, like, distracted by the fact that they even have a question mark on, like, a diorama regarding, like, it just seems unscientific to be putting question marks on dioramas, but yeah. And uh, yeah. Okay. I, I, so so is, that what, is that what Wookie what feels or is that what Sheena feels? Hey? Is that what Wookie is thinking or is what Sheena thinking? No, that's actually what Sheena was thinking. I was just like, that's so unscientific to like really? have a diorama. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause you just there and put it into a sentence. Nuclear fusion, power source of the future, question mark. See what I'm doing there? I'm predicting the future. How oh, am I? <laughs> well, it's a museum. It's supposed to the public go there. Speaking yeah. in layman's terms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So hopefully I've I've convinced Wookie and I've convinced Sheena that speculation on future technology is a real thing. Oh no, no. I mean like as as someone who's done like posters and stuff, I'm just like, that's not how I would have done that. But sorry. I'm Maybe distracted. I've then maybe Phil has inspired the future Sheena to put more question marks in your posters. <laughs> okay. Put the questions to the audience. Don't tell, get them to think for themselves. Don't tell them what to think. Anyway, I digress. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, Carswell, uh, what are you doing? Um, are you on your phone? Is he still out in the gardens? He's, he's still, he's yes. still <laughs> prowling. He's still prowling the garden, scaring children. So Song would make her way out into the gardens as well. Okay. All right. Uh, well, if, well, you're, that's if, easy. if you come out the front doors, by this time I've done a full lap, so I'm, I'm coming back towards front doors and I would see you. Would you? Carswell, oh. anything interesting out there? Um, I'm still looking for the Institute, you know, Institute of Science. I'm still um, looking for it. The big it's, building behind it's, it's you. A huge building that's oh, right in front of you. Thank you, thank mm. you. I'll, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll maybe we'll do a, do another lap <laughs> and uh, maybe see if there's any other ways to get inside. Yeah. There, there are big signs on the building. In actual fact, it's it's engraved in the stone. Um. So well, 
perhaps we'll walk the, walk around again and I want to see if there are any um any like uh windows that are uh could be a potential other access point sure so as you're walking around you um I'll get song to do it this time because cards was already had to go um song you can do an investigation for me <laughs> oh here we go two yeah I don't know if there is even any windows I know there's a building there's not yeah. any windows though <laughs> yeah I'm not telling you nothing because you both can't roll <laughs> <laughs> what 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 like this roll today. perception yeah. I thought it'd be but perception would be way up my alley but <laughs> like same here <laughs> no fine if you if you no. one of you with that low of a roll, mm. if, you, if you choose one of you, you can do a perception roll. Who's we'll it going to be? Well. Oh, here yeah, we go. No pressure go. now. You wanted it. You've got it. <laughs> don't, don't mess it up. Oh God. <sighs> Seventeen. Okay. Hey. There are there are windows on the ground floor. Um, it would appear most of them have got bars of bars of iron on the outside. Uh, you also notice there's um, like a, a stairwell leading down below ground level, um, and it's got um, there's a sign above the door saying deliveries. Okay. Around the other side of the building, from where you what's went the door made of? Don't know. You, I gave you a chance to investigate. You know, this is, <laughs> this is perception. perception. Now. You see the windows and doors. Um, around the other side, the opposite entrance from the museum, there's a, a rather grander entrance, which is the main entrance to the Institute of Science. <clears throat> so not the museum, the entrance, the actual institute. Yeah, so on the, on, on the one side, you've gone into the museum entrance. On the other side of the building, the opposite facing of the building is the, uh, the entrance to the Institute of Science. Okay. I'm also admiring the gardens. <laughs> they are very nice. Yeah. Um, can we make our way to the door to the actual institute area? Uh, you... Yes, you can. There's a um, there's a nice gravel wide path that leads up. There's about ten um, nicely uh, sand nicely um, masoned sandstone steps, and there's two sets of big like double doors. They're probably made of oak. I know you're going to ask. Um, they're probably made of oak and they're quite exquisitely carved. Anyone anyone standing outside? Uh, there's, there seems to be people going in and out. And when I say people, I'm speaking of men. Uh, one of these men who looks like he is of the scientific type, I, mm -hmm. yep. as he's <clears throat> about to walk in, I will go, uh, I will say, uh, Excuse me, sir, would you be kind enough to show me your workshop inside and now I'm going to cast Charm Person. <laughs> oh, oh, no. This is bad for two reasons, because one is I've sat here without any dice. Um, <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. Um, uh, I'll tell you what, you can um, just roll. Oh, it's me that has to bloody roll. Mm. Mm. Do that Google set how many. Yeah, I will. I will. I'm going to do that. I'm using an electronic D20 as well. All right, so um, I need to find out where my uh, internet sure is. sure you were having a go at Carmen before about not having dice. I'm just... Okay, that's enough from you. I'm going to mute you. <laughs> All right, um, I am going to go to... I need a new tab. Oh, actually, I'm going to come out of this. I'm going to... Um, just going to go to Google. And D6. Those are, hell yeah. Um, so it's not D6. I want, I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to take a D20 and I roll a four. Um, so he is charmed. Wait. <laughs> I'm going to casually just wander down to the um, fence line. Then I can still see the door. From. All right. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Um, so uh, he he kind of doffs his top hat and says, oh, madam, oh, well, well, I don't see why not for such a pretty little thing like you. Um, it may so all be a much. bit much for you, but come on. 
Um, Tell and, me everything you know. And, and he and he and he hooked his, <laughs> he hooked his elbow out like this for you to. And I blink okay. around. He goes. Uh, and he and he kind of he's 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 kind of a bit of a sugar daddy. He's like in his late fifties, um, and he's very well dressed. Um, as you start and to walk the steps, huh? And she's a cat. Uh, she's a tabaxi. Let's not go there. All right. She's a tabaxi. <laughs> she is a humanoid. All right. It's a particularly furry one. Um, <laughs> as you approach the door, um, a security guard says, oh, uh, "Excuse me, um, uh, Doctor Wilson. You, you you know the rules. You can't be taking a young women inside. Women are not allowed." And and Doctor Wilson looks at, oh, I am sorry, I forgot, I'm not allowed to take you in there. What a silly thing! Can I step up and have a word with the You're security? You're not there. I am the going to building. try and chomp this this person, wasting two spell slots. Yay. Oh, uh, okay, but you can't be charming the same. Uh, you can't be using two charms at the same time. Ah, uh, concentration, okay. I believe. Uh no, no concentration. What? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's broken. <laughs> Oh, well, you okay. can. You can try. Oh, that's all right. Oh, I'm, love... oh, sorry. I'll cast it at level two then and try and do both. Do both. So this could break both right. of them. Or... All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh... So oh. this could be bad. <laughs> Yay! Oh. Oh. Hey. Oh. No. He says, wow. uh, now, now, look here, miss. I... Uh, uh, you might be pretty and all that, but you, you can't be, A, you can't be coming in here because, you know, because your pintle brain won't take all the science that's going on in there. And secondly, the if, if you're trying to charm me, right, I could have you done by the police for illegal use of trying to charm someone. That's bad. You're I'll a bad pat. cat. I'm sorry. Okay, no, well, <laughs> well, don't do it again. Be on your way, miss. Good day, sirs. And I'll walk Good away. Good day to you, madam. <laughs> Oh, and Dr. Wilson, but you were charmed as well, Stupid weren't Dr. you? Dr. Wilson. Oh, I don't know. I'm into cats. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've done it without the charm person. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, wouldn't have needed the charm. Um, okay, so that's, um, yay, oh. 20 for me. Um, so I'm going to leave, uh, you, I presume you're going to walk back to Carswell, who's hanging back yes. at the, in the fence line looking to scare more children, presumably. I'll just say, I tried. <laughs> that's yeah. okay. We're for, we're for, we're for shot. <laughs> Okay, so back to the four of you. Um, what you doing? Um, uh, now, do I see any doorways or anything like that? Um, that are uh, maybe staff only, or is it uh, just like a, <clears throat> a wall? Yeah, there's a, there's a door at the end of this uh, modern uh, t modern times exhibition that says staff only. Is there a window pane on it or anything like uh, that? No, they're very expensive doors. This is just made out of wood. I'm not sure what wood in case anyone. Probably pine. No, beech. Oh, no, oak. I'm getting confused. It's probably oak. It's an old building, so. Yeah. Um, um, can I what, casually saunter off and find Igbo? I'm uh, still in the not, same room as you, so. Uh, it's not hard well, to find. He's, 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 well, unless you're going to step down, him, he's, not, he's not that little. You're good at looking down at people. Oh, good, good point. Touche. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to lower my voice and speak to Ikbo, hopefully. So I don't know how good Timber's hearing is, but so that Lani can hear at least. And she talks a lot. So I'm hoping she covers that. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to ask Ikbo, is this necessary? Can you not find another means of getting this? Get, getting what? The chemical, well, not chemical. I assume it's chemical. The uh, what we're here to find. Have Have you heard of this before? This is new to me. I believe this would be the only way. Okay. I, I can I can I can ask one of my contacts, but I am not hopeful in this. I wouldn't. If it's a secretive, then there's no no guarantee that we'll keep no. it after we as, as been said, it's pretty cutting edge. It's not going to be a valuable commodity speak for yourself but i'm not gonna say, actually no, i'm not gonna say that um okay i'm just gonna nod and walk back and say we need to, we need to look elsewhere um i wander over to the door and give it a give it a go see if it opens yeah it opens anything interesting inside I don't know. You've you've just tried the handle and it appears to open. You haven't oh, tried it. Okay. I, I open I open the door 
um and like i look inside is it just like a janitor's closet or oh no there's a there's a short corridor that appears to lead into another room <laughs> hmm okay Go so I can, you, can, you, can i say this the door and wow, I look that's a very good question i'm about to find Wait. out whether anyone has seen this I want to know if I've seen her open the door that says staff only. <laughs> are, are you are you trying to do this stealthily, Wookie? Not particularly. That's the wrong answer. All right. <laughs> like, I'm assuming that we're the only ones in this room. Well, I mean, so... apart, from the, apart from the four guards that were there earlier. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I did mention that, but, you know. Hold well, on, let me just, let me just roll guide... with the dice. Our guide had left. The guide had, but the four security guards were still in there. Uh, you haven't been seen yet. Okay. So, yeah. So I I notice that there's is there anything other than the fact that there's a hallway and another room? Like, do I notice anything from that distance in the room? Unless you've got eyes like a snail, that you wouldn't be able to tell. Eyes like a snail. Yeah, on stalks that can go around corners. And oh, stuff. okay. Um, okay, well, like, I close the door and I, mm -hmm. like, go over to um, probably our finely dressed lady. Which one? What, a nice? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, and I inform her because I kind of see her as our current leader of the bunch. <laughs> um, and, and, and hey no this is how she, she would like perceive it um and i mentioned to you that there's like a corridor and another room and i'm like, kind of excited about it but i'm like kind of know that i should let someone i can't i shouldn't go off on my own device um seeing as like you know we're off on a day trip i would probably look to our rogue and ask if he feels like being roguey <laughs> Yogi's there, and I point to Gregor. <laughs> he, he looks around and waves at everyone. Oh, oh. Uh, uh, I would ask Igbo how confident he feels about checking out what's in that office. Uh, I can go with Gregor into this and have an investigation, but someone needs to distract the guards. They seem to be plentiful here. We'll take care of that. And I'm going to walk towards the door that was gestured to say, come on, uh, Yogi. Well, Gregor says, uh, maybe you'd, you would like me to create a distraction while you go in. Ooh. Break things. What kind of distraction do you have in mind? Uh, well, I, I, I don't generally plan or think these things. So something will come to hand. Good dear. That, that poster that we were looking at earlier, um, is that... Whereabouts is that place compared to the the staff door? It's on the it's on the same side of the room, and yeah, it kind of there's only okay. one small case after that. That then it's the doorway. Okay, so not that. Um, well, Wookie, you come with me. Gregor, you stay with a nice. Yeah, no worries. You want me? You want distraction? You get distraction. I'm hoping he gives it a bit of delay before he just walks off to do distraction. <laughs> uh, you didn't kind of say anything, so he's going to kind of look for something to knock over now. Gimmer's start... just going to move to uh, a separate area of the room in case <laughs> distraction goes bad. Yeah. Um, so uh, Gregor walks over and... I start walking to the door. <laughs> and, and he sees um, there's like... Um, I suppose a, a life-size like mock-up of a piston. You know, it's like a cutaway section of a piston. And um, he's going to roll a strength check to try and knock that over. Um, and I think I'll get plus four. Can't believe you're getting me to roll stuff now. Um, <laughs> oh, plus three. Plus you three. volunteered for this. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Uh, he gets 14, so um, he kind of kind of does um, what we're now going to call a, an nice nip, hud, nip uh, hip nudge, and, and kind of <laughs> this, this large piece of metal that's about six foot tall just kind of crashes over onto the floor, 
Um, it breaks into different met metallic parts and goes skittering across the floor. And and it, and he kind of looks up and says, "Oh my goodness, I have knocked over this thing! Oh no, what do I do now?" <laughs> I um, open the door and go through it at the same time. Yeah, well, and I'm, I... I'm just gonna. I'm just before you do that. I'm just gonna roll. Unless I roll really badly, um, that will be enough to distract the guards. Uh, oh. Yeah. Um, you need About... to roll. Okay. So, Stuart, uh, Igbo, you need to roll stealth. Uh, if the guards are dis are the guards distracted? Well, not enough that you don't have to roll for stealth. I only rolled oh. a four. For their for perception, time. or. Well, if it had been a decent roll, then all four would have come running over to kind of help. Okay, yeah, yeah. But I only rolled a four, so I'm not convinced that everyone's completely focused on me. Uh, it's a 15 stealth check. Um, I will do... Um, I quite like this dice now. Um, I'm going to do a roll with... Uh, oh, no, I don't want that. Um, I'm going to roll with... Dis um, this isn't it. I'm going to roll with uh, disadvantage to see for perception for the guards. <laughs> Thank oh. goodness. I I'll take the two. Um, so the guards do not see you slip into the other room. Um, I mean, with you? Sorry? Was I, roll, was I meant to roll as well? Uh, no, that's fine. I'll just take it as the one. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you walk down. It's, uh, the, the corridor is like 10 feet long. It's not very big. And um, it's, like, it's like a glorified staff room. There's a table there. There's a few chairs. It smells of tobacco. Um, there's a bookshelf. There's and there's a bit of knickknackiana, so yeah. Um, I'm gonna walk through and try and find some sort of workshop type area, something a bit more advanced than a cafe. Uh, well, it's a staff room, it's not a cafe, it hasn't got the selection of a cafe. Um, there is, um, you, see, you see people's coats and cloaks and hats, uh, hanging up on a, on a coat hook and rack. Um, Ooh, and know. then, and then there's you notice on the right hand side. Uh, there's a couple of lavatory stalls, and then there's another door. Uh, any spare keys or anything in the lab coats? Um, well, you can do an investigation if you wish. I would love to. Please do. Do any coats have monkeys on them? No, sorry. <laughs> that would be a 15 investigation. Um, you don't find any keys, but you do find um, 16 marks in cash. Okay. I'm just going to leave that there. Yeah, all right. Um, do we want to bring a coat with us? Because it looks uh, up to me. So I um I I take it that I'm wearing my big jacket still. Uh, unless you and, tell me otherwise. <clears throat> yeah. Um and so I uh, I'm gonna size up the coats, look at me, look at the coats and look at her and just be like <laughs> yeah. Can I point yeah. out they're probably not used to seeing dwarves and kobolds in their lab gear? Well, hold on. Well, no, no. Let's let's taste, pump, pump the brakes on that. I didn't say it was a lab. I said th oh, this sorry. is a staff room. So oh, I'm, just assu I'm just assuming that the coats are bigger than I am. Well, let's. I, I want. Yeah, they are. But I want Rookie to roll a d20 for me. Are these lab coats or are these standard coats? Roll a d20 for me. 19. So you find um, one of the, uh, so one of the security guards got like jacket and you find one that's in dwarf size. Oh, security jacket. Okay. Yeah, so it's where the security come for their breaks. Cool. I put it inside my giant jacket of awesome. <laughs> uh -huh. um, okay. And, uh, and, and yeah, like I look around to see if there's anything worth eating. Is there yeah, like there's, uh, yeah? There's um, a glass jar with like biscuits inside. Awesome! I take two. Yep. Yeah, and there's put also pocket. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Wookie, um, I Wookie, focus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put the, put that jacket on now. <laughs> to put the jacket on now. The staff jacket, because we are in an illegal oh. area. Uh, okay. So I do that. Yep. All right. Um, okay. So what do you want to do now? Where are you going to leave your jacket? 
like that that's what i was thinking i was like mm, i'd rather put it put it inside my big jacket and Keep then for safekeeping <laughs> i i would i would think to to use it to get into the um into the other building because that's where we need to go so so yeah i i stash it inside my my big main jacket and uh and i take it that there's no other doors this is just like a a single room off from um the uh the main exhibit uh, as mentioned earlier there was a, another door by the two lavatory stalls in that room oh i go check it out uh the door is unlocked uh, and you open it and it leads to a, an iron staircase and you're basically outside it looks like a fire escape kind of arrangement okay Ooh. Uh, am I able to tamper with this lock so if we come back at night, it'll reopen? Um, sure. Roll me sleight of hand. Uh, 17. Yep. Yeah, so um, you, you tinker with the lock. And as far as you know, you've done a, a pretty fair job. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You guys done? Yeah. So yep. um, back outside, um, the the guards are, are trying manfully to put the uh, the cutaway piston back together, and unfortunately for them, Gregor's also trying to help them. Um, and it seems to be like um, the, the clowns in a, the circus act. Um, mm -hmm. So um, for Wookie and Ikbo, if you're going to if you're going to try and leave the room using stealth, now would be an awfully good time to do it. Yeah. You can still do it. You can still hear a commotion outside. I shall yep. do so. All right. So you're gonna have to you're you're gonna have to leave with stealth. I'll take it as whoever. I'll I'll take two. You know, two for one, basically. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> your stealth is higher. That would make sense. Yeah. Uh, twenty-one. All right. So uh, Very well. I will roll for perception. Yeah, they don't see you come back out. Yes. Cool. And, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I just tried to help. I, I accidentally stumbled into this thing and uh, it fell apart so easily. It's like, all right, yeah, all right, mate. Don't worry. We'll, we'll put you, just, just stop trying to help, all right? You're just making things worse with your big clumsy paws. Uh, just kind of just, just step over there with your friends and uh, let, let us sort it out. And, and um, Gregor sees your slyly you you sees you note he notices you back with the group so he kind of oh i'm sorry okay no worries so i hope you have a good day um and it leaves the guards to kind of pick up the pieces literally um, yeah. um i look around at the guards are there any that like you know are of dwarven like descent or anything like that well, there's there's one person there that's quite short, but you're not quite. It's embarrassingly not quite short enough. Whether it's a tall dwarf or a short human, <laughs> <laughs> only you can tell. Only you can ask. Maybe it's a halfling. Who knows? Uh, no, like I'm I'm just making like a quiet observation as I walk past. Um, there's a there's an elf, uh, two <laughs> humans, and somebody who's quite short. Is is there uh, is there anyone who looks more official? No, they all look pretty much like a shambles at the moment. Okay, so there's no senior amongst them. Not that you can tell. I mean, three of them are wearing their hats. The other one's hat fell on the floor and Gregor trod on it, so it's, 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 it's got a big dent in the middle. Um, the the tires are kind of a bit crooked now, and they're looking like yeah, they're not looking very professional right now. Okay. Do I see them having any like kind of tags, anything like that that's identifying? Oh, like, they've, all got, they've all got name tags on. Did I notice if the jacket that I grabbed had a name tag on it? Uh, roll me um, an investigator, a historicalist investigation. Have a flashback <laughs> moment. Nice <laughs> um, yeah. and that'll be mine. Uh, 11. Yeah, there's a name tag on it. You can't quite remember what the name said though. Okay. You saw that. You saw there's a metal badge on the outfit, but you didn't. I mean, at this point, Ikbo was really rushing you, so yeah. Yeah, like we we could, we have places to go. Okay. So um, 
yeah, like, you know, I, I take it that we're on our way out. Unless you, there's anything else you want to do in that room, yeah. Not me in particular. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, assist helping out with uh, going over to the guards. Do you, do you want help packing this mess up? I'm sorry. No, 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 just, just stay away. Stop <laughs> helping, all right? You've, everyone's had a go, and it really—it's not—it's not like audience participation. Just leave us be, please. Uh, I see great. something that's broken, and I cast mending on it and like hand it over. Oh, oh well, I guess you can help again in the future. <laughs> <laughs> where, where were you? Uh, and they just kind of pop it back up again, and and everything is back as it were. <clears throat> see, we're not all bad. Just some no, of no, 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 don't, don't get me wrong, sir. I didn't say any of you were bad. I'm just saying, you know, if you could just mostly just avoid helping. Um, <laughs> I picked up another thing and put, like cast mending on it and hand it over. Will you stop? Okay, that wasn't broken. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was actually an ancient piece of technology. That you know, don't worry about. It. Just leave it. Just leave it. Um. Yeah, I, so, I tell you about this. What time do you knock off? I buy you a drink. Uh, oh, well, um, we're here until tonight, so we won't be available to have a drink. So, But it's very very generous of you, though, sir. Thank we you. We might be around. What time is shift change? <laughs> that, that seems an awfully specific question. I'm not sure we've been up in that. No disrespect, or I don't know you from a bar of soap. I'm going to put on my megawatt smile up the charm, be like... But you, you gentlemen are obviously hardworking and we've caused you some dis difficulty. It, it's up to us. We must repay you. And, and we I think, I, I, the drink. I think you you're know. offering a different type of services there, Anais. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, uh, I'm working. <laughs> um, are you trying to persuade me then? Yes, I am. Well, then you better roll a dice then to tell me what number it comes up. Oh, That's terrible. the way this okay. game works. No, no, it's fine. It just succeeded. It would have. That's okay. Um, 18 plus my plus nine modifier. Oh, oh god damn it. Well, I won't even bother. <laughs> so, what was it you were asking again? I want to know what time the shift changes. Um, well, we're here until nine o'clock tonight. Um, 12 hour shift. If you, you see. happen to be around, would you be willing to let my friends take you out for a drink? Uh, no, we've got families to get back to, really. But thanks for the offer. Okay, fair. Right. Another night then. Well, maybe, as long as you promise not to come back and break anything, yeah. <laughs> I shall see you tomorrow. <laughs> All right. And, and because this is session one and you're kind of still getting into this, uh, Gregor points out, is, uh, but before we go, uh, you know, the, the little skinny man with old beard and funny cloak, uh, coat uh, and box with the costume, it's... he said, yeah, yeah, last night, yes. Yeah. Now, he said uh, he's looking for a metal cylinder about three inches long, yeah? Did he ask this in front he of the guards? He just asked for that, lad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dear. He says, you remember, yes? He asked for this, yeah? Um, we were talking to a, a, a little man. No, sorry. darling, that was that was Pepper. I'm sorry. We, we, that was at the restaurant. You've had too much to drink. We, you must stop doing no, no, this. No, 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 no. I... I this is not. This is after I had drink. We went to an old man house, and he says, "This is what we need." Timber's just gonna <laughs> take him and, sh and just shuffle him. He's like, "No, no, 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 no." Who are you, shot me? And Would the werewolf <laughs> please move the bear? <laughs> and, and he's gonna give you a, a gentle shove back. Um... Oh, um... oh, fuck! Gentle, <laughs> gentle. All right. Um, <laughs> You can do a dexterity saving throw. Throws you across the room. <laughs> right into the base. Oh, 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 excuse me. Can you see that? No. no. Keep going. Oh, God damn it. Hold on. Slide your book down. There you go. What's that? Nat 20. Oh. oh. <laughs> <All right. laughs> that, nat, nat 20 to Nat 20. We're all like they're holding on to so each other. Gre Gregor gives a particularly enthusiastic shove. Um, and you brace yourself pretty well and don't move anywhere. Um, so, but but guys, what do you know? I'll just Come be on, like, I hear, I, I hear you. Not here. Not here. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> <Gregor's> <laughs> right. I will, and I'm just going to keep. 
I'm just going to keep shoving and then um, I'm just going to tell the it's, oh, we're just getting some fresh air. And I'm just going to take Gregor out. Mm -hmm. out I don't need to be shoved. But so, he, he, I'm going to try to encourage Gregor to, to come outside the front yeah. of the museum. We've, we've done enough. Well, Carswell <laughs> and I will probably be out there. Yeah. Oh, look, uh, there's uh, Carswell and uh, Song of River. Hey. Good day, guys. Gregor. Good day to you as well. Mate, <laughs> mate, as I think they say, mate. Good day, mate. So if if the other three of us are still with the guards, are they asking us anything or are they sort of just like, what's going on here? Nah, they're 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 thoroughly just kind of phased out of what you lot are talking about, to be honest. All right. Sweet. It, there was there was no context, and even before then they're kind of tired of what everyone was talking about. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I go over to Gregor's arm and like kind of pull on it because I'm gone. of his. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I took Gregor out the front of the museum. Oh, yeah, no, I got him out. Followed you guys. Oh, okay. Oh. So it's just um, Ikbo and an ace now left in the modern times exhibition. I was yeah. going to do a quick scout around like the inside wall, but around like the perimeter, see so if there's any other doors or anything. Uh, no, it was the door into the exhibition and the door out, which you've already tried. And yep. then there's um, there's windows, but they're they're very high up. They're just under the ceiling, kind of to let natural light in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that would be just all of Iqbal would be doing, just surveilling the rest of the building, and then he will uh, leave. When you say the rest of the building, are you going to go around the entire museum? Yeah, like not studying everything, but just sort of like looking for ways in and out of the building. All right. Um, so that that would take you a good hour to, to even for a cursory glance around the rest of the museum. I'm fine with this. Okay. Yep. Um, and Anais, what are you doing? I am going to... I'm going to sort of meander around parts of the museum. I'm hoping that my fabulously like dressed personage is going to distract from the kobold running around looking sneaky. <laughs> so, I'm not so can I just sneaky. clarify, because we keep referring to the fabulous dressage, what are you wearing? Oh, do you want me to show you? i show you. Hang on. Onesie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a giraffe onesie. <laughs> so yeah. why you I don't know why you need okay. to distraction me. I'm just like looking around yeah. the exhibit. Like, I'm a patron here. I can look around wherever I want. It's, um, uh, do you know what a walking dress is? A dress that walks? <laughs> That you can can walk you share in. your screen? Do you have a picture of it on your screen? A different computer, let me try. Uh, but basically, it's, um, there's different styles between walking dresses and riding dresses, and, and oh, I don't, okay. they've got a million dresses. Um, basically, it's designed so that you can casually can move fairly freely. It's not split like a horse. Anyway, the point is, okay. it's very well tailored. It's <clears> like <throat> a, a mahogany wine-ish colour. Um, and I've got my parasol, hairs all up in ringlets and stuff like that. Like I, I'm, I'm, and I am, even though I'm lower class nobility, I'm also working for upper class nobility. So everything oh. is well to do. Proper, proper spiffy. Yeah. Oops. Oh, that that was, I kind like that. that. Oh, hey. Hey. Literally that. Power of screen sharing. Look at that. <laughs> oh yeah. Have you got the same kind of hat on as well? Uh, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Well, that's the picture <laughs> that my character has in for my character sheet. So yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Cool. Very right. fancy and <laughs> All right. So um, we're going to, uh, for the narrative purposes, skip forward an hour. So Igbo, you finished your, um, your kind of reconnoiture of the museum area. And so how we're going to play this is uh, in future, if you're in this area, if you need any, if you need to do any roles about anything particular, you'll get advantage on them because you've okay. got some more comprehensive knowledge of the setup. Um, presumably, you then come back out the museum. Yes. And you'll see the rest of us kind of gathered. Probably, I'm going to say we're probably seated under a tree now on the grass. Um, I'm probably pointing out different plants and where how they grow. And <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure, I, I'm I'm not sure, if, I'm not sure if anyone's interested in. No, I'm just talking. Um, Is the bard <laughs> playing music? Oh, she's not that kind of bard. She's not that good. I have musical instruments, but no, that's not my bardish. She didn't bring her <laughs> piano with her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's Timber doing? What are you talking about? Huh? Um, I'm outside with the others, and I'll probably be listening to Song of the River talk about various plants, because like having having the background of a carpenter and being from a country full like that's a closer to nature than yeah. the rest of the the nations yeah. are. I I yeah. probably would be interested in listening to her. 
Yay. <laughs> so it's a it's a fairly um, sunny day. There's big uh, big clouds in the sky, but kind of fair weather clouds. Um, the air is relatively fresh. It's coming from the uh, west, so it's coming. It's not coming off the ocean, but it's coming off a less polluted area. Uh, when the wind in Liberty City comes from the north, it brings down all the smoke and shit from the foundries and the factories. Um, so that's a, a bad air quality day. Today's okay. Um, so yeah, you you make the most of a rather pleasant um, day. So I'm just trying to think nine, ten. It's probably about eleven o'clock now. Eleven o'clock in the morning by the time you've done all of that. Um, may I propose um, a, a perhaps a slightly more isolated location where we're not overheard and where we might reconnoitre for lunch? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think this is a good idea. Timber just goes. Yeah. Lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and even yeah. if we didn't bring any, we know the dwarfs packing. So <laughs> that was yesterday's coat. I wouldn't want to be eating anything. Actually, Gregor wouldn't mind eating stuff out of it yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I, I think a pocket just, chicken. A fresher. Well, Wookie would be fine with eating like leftovers from days before. That would not phase her. She's had to live off the land before as part of her training. <laughs> okay. Oh, so uh, we go to a tavern for food and drink. Mm -hmm. Yes. Carswell's fine. I may, like this. Maybe see if the tavern has a private room that we can uh, occupy. Well, it depends. Uh, the, the taverns around here are busy. Uh, uh, Even better if they're busy, noisy. Maybe they will not hear us. Yeah, Fair enough. It's a good plan. We go to the nearest tavern. And Carswell can buy the drinks. <laughs> no. Uh, Caswell likes money. He has money. He buys drinks. He has money. Caswell likes to hold on to money. And and can I also point out that uh, when we all do the sneaky sneaky thing in a museum, Caswell, you did nothing. You were you were set out here look at flower. <laughs> That's kind of true. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So yeah, you can you can buy drinks. You have money. You have five hundred big one in pocket. I do this round. That's it. Yay! That's good. That is a positive peer pressure. Now, what is the closest? <laughs> what is the closest tavern to here, Gregor? Well, the closest tavern is just over the road. Um, and anyway, that would be on. <laughs> that would be on the other side of Voltaire, um, and it would be the White Hart. H A R T. The White Hart. Cool. Who knows what heart is? It's a female deer. Thank you. It's a white. Yeah. So it's a white deer. Um, and, and it's, yeah, it's I would have um, come over to to Gregor and mm. just explained to him that we were on like you know like a secret um, gift finding quest oh, and that yes. we tell people yes, about. Yes. I, I know, I know. Timber Timber told me in uh, no uncertain terms. She uh, he said uh, uh, that I was a, a silly old bear. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think they say silly old poo, but no, no, sorry, silly old shit bear. I think. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm not so quick up here, so I, I you know, you, you need to tell me quick, do not talk. We will just talk amongst ourselves. And I just, I just give him a pat on the arm because it's like oh, to me, oh. I feel like it was a little bit hurtful the way um, Timber may have gone about explaining that, but you know, <laughs> it's, it it's seems okay. to have. It's okay, Timber, Timber tell me as Timber should. That is fine. I have no problem. And right, he, and Gregor, you did great work at distraction. Very yeah, good. I know. I, I am chief distractor. And he, and he pats Wookie on the top of her head. <laughs> Wookie doesn't like... No. <laughs> that sounds like you lot had fun inside the uh, Institute. Yes, the we, were, we were, we were uh, useful. Useful? Yeah, useful. We were useful to the, the, the plan. Uh, as much as we could find out was there was a delivery entrance and then the entrance to the main institution and that is it. Oh, and, and who found, was that Carswell found or you found? We both. Oh, that is very uh, diplomatic, very diplomatic. Yeah. <laughs> Come. And, and, and Gregor Stan says, Come on, let's drink. I need drink. Okay. And so you, you head south down the grounds. Um, you cross um, 
between the, the horses' carriages. There's, there's a couple of trolley buses as well going on rails. Um, and across there, there's a, a wide uh, tavern frontage, the White Hart, um, stained glass windows. Um, it looks quite a nice place. It looks like the sort of place where people don't often get thrown through the windows. Um, That's cool. And you enter there. It's quite a smoky, it's tobacco smoke, um, quite a beery smell. It's kind of plain wooden floorboards. And there's lots of tables and chairs um, there. And there's a traditional long uh, wooden um, bar. And behind there's there's three or four different kind of like busty wenches um, ready to give you for what ails you. I suggest we find a table in the corner somewhere. Yeah, do, do you look. Uh, Carswell, uh, roll d20, investigation roll, please. Oh. Yeah. You want to you want to put a specific table in a specific place? You're gonna roll me some dice because you need to roll well now. Nineteen. There, there's a there's a beautiful table sits all I don't know about six people uh, in the corner, and there's not too many people sitting over that area either. Hey, who's good. standing then? Huh? Well, if it sits six people, there's seven of us. Who's standing? <laughs> oh, you can sit. You can you can sit on uh, Gregor's lap if you want. <laughs> Oh. I, I, I or, would like a chair. Or we can pull up a chair. I, I will pull up a chair. Yeah, okay. Um, so, okay. So, Carswell, you, you make note of drinks, you buy first around. Me, a uh, big uh, uh, a beer. Beer. Okay. <laughs> and and Gregor goes and takes the first seat at the table in the corner. I get a large cider. Cider? Mm hmm. Ah, uh, what, what else is everyone drinking? Uh, medium ale. And I'm going to go sit next to Gregor. Who's getting the cider? You're, you're <laughs> taking the order. You better know. Wookie. Wookie, thank you. Anyone else? May I have a large ale and see if they have mead. Okay. Oh, I might try one of these mead drinks. <laughs> Let me please. Oh. Sorry? Anis? Say for me, please. Okay. Tea. Tea. All right, I'm going to wander out to the bar and place oh, said order. And, um... So what's uh, the damage? Uh, <laughs> a, a, a female elf says, oh, yes, uh, sir, what can I get you, please? Um, and I relay my order to her. Well, um, that's no good. You have to tell me what you all <laughs> <You're gonna say. laughs> I will working. have yes. a big beer. A big beer. Is that a big beer for the big bear? <laughs> big old beer. <laughs> if you want a big I, beer, uh, you know, uh, uh, I have a beer and some large mug, what, whatever yeah. you have. Yeah, okay, I can do that. Yeah, what, what else? Uh, a cider? Yeah, we ain't got any cider. What else? What can I have instead of cider? What's, an, what's a good alternative? <laughs> well, that's not the way this works. You have to tell me what you want. I mean, if they can have a beer as well if you really want to make it original. <laughs> Fine. What, um, make it two big beers. Yeah, all right. Yeah, two beers. Um, medium ale. A medium ale, yeah, I got it, gotcha. Yeah, and three meads. Three meads, all right, all right. And where, uh, would you, oh, hold on. Uh, and, and she pours the drinks and she says, would you like a tray for this? <laughs> oh, God, you're going to be wrong. Yes, please. There you go. And she, and she puts uh, seven big drinks on the tray. Yeah. It says, uh, all right, thank you. And, and you're asking about the damage. Uh, that's four marks, please. All right, thank you. No worries. Uh, by any chance, could I offer a couple of marks for you to carry this over to the table? Nah, sorry, <laughs> we're, we're not wait staff. You have to do that yourself, you lazy bugger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he gets his dice out. Perfect. <laughs> it's going to be a dexterity roll. That's the d20. Yeah, and no, I just wonder at my. Yeah, okay. He's cool. choosing the right one. Yeah, he's one that's got all 20s on it. 
<laughs> Nine. Nine. Oh, it's not, okay. it's not terrible. It's it's not bad. You you get over um you get over to the table and there's a bit of sloppage in the tray. Um, but generally everyone has their drinks. So who who has now no no help from the audience? Jezza, who has what? All right. <laughs> Give me a sec. Oh, bloody hell. Ah, the bear gets the, the big beer. Uh, my name is Gregor, but that's fine. <laughs> he takes the big um, beer. Wookie, here's your... Uh, no, no cider, I'm sorry, but um, there, here's the beer for you. Yeah. A, big, a big beer. I look a disappointed, but it's fine. Um, Ikob, uh, medium Who? ale. Who is Ikob? Ikob. Ikob. Who is Ikob? <laughs> he's, he's not good with names, friend. He called me Bear. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I just ignore, I ignore you and put your beer in front of you. Uh, your, sorry, your medium ale. Thank you, sir. And, and to, um, to Wolf, um, Song and... Wood. Wow. And us, I, I, I give you your mates. I think you have problem with the the non-human people in this group. You have uh, a wolf, uh, we have bear, and we have Igbrog booger. Uh, he you know. remembers my name. Yeah, no, he <laughs> your name. name. I'm going to slide the mead I did not order over to the dwarf. Oh what? <laughs> it was uh. And where where's her tea? <laughs> 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 I was going to say he's sexist and likes ladies more than men, but apparently he does not. <laughs> no, he <Yeah>. doesn't. <laughs> okay, I, I'm... I'm very happy with my two pints. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, yes, you come out on this on top. Um, I'm going to wander back to the uh, back to the bar and call over the uh, the bar wench and politely <laughs> <A> ask. Wench. <laughs> Yeah, don't call yeah. her a wench. There you call me a wench. Yeah. Hey, wench. Um, you again. I'm never getting uh, that no. too, if that's the case. <laughs> um, could I, could I please get a uh, a seven of tea, please? Oh, we don't do tea. What else would you like? Doesn't matter that he forgot anyway. <laughs> it's it's a tavern, so you know, like we don't do tea. You want to go to a tea world. house for tea? I wander back to the table. Anas, I'm sorry, we do, they do not do tea. Fine. I'm not thirsty. I tried. Yeah, you can see you're trying. Yeah. I know. So it it is it awkward. Look, it look awkward uh, that you sit here while we drink and you not drink anything. And this is a tavern, you know. You need it's to fine. have a drink. Huh? It's fine. I'll eat. Well, I don't know. Okay, but uh, I feel awkward. I just feel kind of a bit oh, a bit uncomfortable. Don't they have like a mocktail or anything like that? Oh, in ancient <laughs> they don't like, have yeah. tea. I don't like our jazz <laughs> with a mocktail. Maybe. Who knows? It's a bit more sophisticated. Look at the crack. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure that they would have had some kind of variant of a cocktail. Wouldn't they? Fine. Well, Carl, Carswell, go back and ask. Oh, he's gone. Look, he's gone already. <laughs> Carswell, go, go, and, uh, go and see oh, if they uh, have. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Go, go like, and ask. Go, and it would make sense that she would drink fine wine, but you may not have the, the dollar for it. So I heard someone say cocktail. Should I go ask for a strawberry daiquiri? <laughs> yes, please. That I'll drink. I like All that. right. I wander back to the bar. I'm going to pour, pour for a glass of wine um, if they have to. I'll, I'll follow him to the bar this time as well. Uh, oh, I, okay. Thank you, Song. I, I seem to be having trouble with this. So I, I appreciate You should sit part. down, friend. <laughs> I'm okay. heading back to the bar. Yes, hello. Uh, I remember you. Seems yes, like only having... two minutes ago you were here. Yes, having trouble getting a order. Yeah. Either a strawberry daiquiri if you have it, if not, oh, a glass what? of wine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's in in the in the word strawberry daiquiri. There's 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 two things I don't understand. What's a strawberry? <laughs> <laughs> and what's a daiquiri? Is it like beer? How about Carswell? Let us get a bottle of wine for the table and perhaps a 
do you have some kind of <laughs> share platter <laughs> for the table some cheeses oh. and bread and something that yeah, we can snack on yeah we can uh, sort something out for you like that but uh, what kind of wine would you like alcoholic yeah okay wine. thank you i'm gonna to speak to the lady now <laughs> <laughs> He, seems, he doesn't seem to be much of an expert on alcohol or drinking or taverns or life. Or ordering. <laughs> yeah, or being useful. I will ride well with the food, but what do you think would go best with our platter? Uh, cheese, bread, and some cold cuts. Probably, uh, probably a medium red, I would Perfect. say. Perfect. How yeah. much will that be? I'll take this one, Castle, for the food. And oh, that's going to be a Mark 50. Perfect. Bomb. No worries. And I give you a, a, a lot. <laughs> and and um, the barmaid opens the wine. He says, oh, you might want to let that breathe a little bit. But uh, yeah, there you go. Thank you. And I'll see you soon. She looks at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I should be back for a decanter later. <laughs> do you even know what one of those is, pal? Yes, I do, actually. What's a decanter <laughs> then? Go on then. What's a it's decanter? For, it's for allowing the wine to breathe. Is it? Is it though? Because when I went to Vintners College, I'm pretty sure a decanter was to allow things to decant, which is to allow the solids to flow to the bottom. And so oh, when I... you pour, you don't get bits in your drink. Like, go get an example out of my pantry. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I tell you what, that was a brave effort. Good on you for trying. You don't. You clearly don't mind looking silly. No. Oh, I, thank you. Yeah, I'm right going to go and serve some other people now. But you know, see you later. There we go. Serena's actually gone to get one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, here we go. Thank you. No worries. Thank you, Song. Um, so I, I know I, hang on, I have to show you. I'm sorry, I have to. Can I do a screen share? How do I, I do this? What? You did it before, so. No, I, I shared the screen. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I just oh. found the perfect picture, apparently. There you go. <laughs> oh, my God. That is, that is awesome. Whoa. $750. Ever. That's like a that thousand. Is terrifying. <laughs> Why? What? So many questions. A thousand bucks for that. I think Serena's oh. confused about coming back to this picture. Yeah, we, I, can, we I can read it, but wow. <laughs> we, I'm confused. That's some impressive glass that. work, though. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's not yeah, as, no. as fancy. I got. Yeah. Boo, that's boring. Mm. <laughs> but it looks amazing. I Call that say. a chicken. <laughs> it is pretty. Hey, Phil and I made this, okay? Yeah, this is a team baby. effort. What's it now? It's mead. Oh, oh, honey okay. mead. Actual mead. Very good. Nice. Not honey mead, mead. Oh, okay. Mead. mead is only made with honey, so. <laughs> That's another point. Yeah, true. Well, I did right. make a otherwise, maple Otherwise, we'd all be wine. saying, oh, I've got a bottle of grape wine. <laughs> Yeah. I did make because a maple mead once. That maple was maple. Was that maple? Mm -hmm. The one you gave me, was that maple? No, no, that was honey. That was standard mead. But yeah. I made a maple one once because a bunch of my friends were vegan and it's like, oh, we can't have it because it's honey. It's like, <laughs> okay, challenge accepted. I made it out of maple syrup. And, and I'm going to tell you because I've made mead a couple of times in the past. I'm just going off topic. But I've now found a recipe that's a Viking recipe and it's called Blant. And it's actually um, mead made with honey and whey instead of water. So cheese whey. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, it's oh a God. Thing, so I'm definitely going to try it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I've just realized it's getting very close to 10 o'clock. So what I'm tempted to do is leave you guys uh, having your lunch and drinks at the tavern. And we shall join. Uh, we shall restart next Thursday um, at the White Heart Tavern, where you discuss your next steps. Over cheese and dip. Over cheese and dips. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Um, <laughs> so uh, thank you for everyone uh, for playing. Thank you if you've been watching on Facebook. Um, my intention is to be here every Thursday, uh, more or less. So, um, and in the meantime, if you've got any questions about tonight's adventure, um, feel free to ask on the group page. Uh, or if, if you find like... a better decanter, post a picture of it, because it was not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's going to be our running theme now. Decanters that don't look like <laughs> Um. So yeah, thanks everyone for playing. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope people enjoyed watching and we'll see you next week. Mm. All right. See you later. Bye. Adios, amigos. Bye. Bye.